Rooksy. Rooksy. Is it 18 in a row? Is it 18? I think I think we've won. I th Under a cloudy sky with a game time temperature of 86 degrees. It is thick and muggy and very little wind here at OBU's Crane Family Stadium with the Herd Athletic Complex. We welcome you to Bison Hill for the second of six home games here in 2022 and the fourth week of the Great American Conference football season. Tonight, it is the 26th all-time meeting between the Bison and the Bulldogs of Southwestern Oklahoma State. Hello again, everyone. I'm Todd Miller along with John Brooks, Scott Wanish, and John Zontlow, our network coordinator. Glad to be home after more than 16 hours of driving the last two weeks and nearly 1,200 miles round trip to Monticello, Arkansas and to Alva. We will begin our pregame show produced and brought to you by Noble McIntyre after this opening timeout. You're listening to Bison Football on the OBU Radio Network. You, Scott, are you with me? Yes, sir. Okay. We didn't lose the win in 18. Here with the booth as we get ready for Oklahoma Baptist and Southwestern Oklahoma State. OBU, as of late, has had the upper hand of this series. We told you tonight is the 26th all-time meeting dating back to the first round of football here on Bison Hill. OBU leads at 14-9-2. They are 4-2 and two in winners of four straight in the Division II era over Southwestern Oklahoma State. Brooksy, it is good to be back home. It is cool by temperatures, but very, very muggy, as Scott will tell us down on the field here shortly as we anticipate a top-of-the-hour kickoff. Okay, you ready? Yep. I got three numbers for you. 10, 4, 4. I only have two numbers, but... In order, 10, 4, and another 4, okay? If these numbers hold up tonight, there will be no question who wins the game. That will be Oklahoma Baptist. 10 tackles for a loss, 4 sacks a week ago in one game, okay? And 4 forced fumbles. I'm sorry, the last time these two teams met, a year ago. And then in the game last week against Northwestern, 4 forced fumbles. You get that kind of defense, there will be no question who will be winning the game here today. The defense, I thought, made big strides. In fact, I had talked uh, around campus this week that I thought maybe that was the best defensive effort all around that we have seen in several years yeah, really. in totality by a Bison defense. Now, again, it's all about who the opposition is. But the point is this. You still, whoever the opposition is, you have to go out and play. And there has been opposition similar to the opposition last week where you didn't get that same kind of play. I agree with you without question. Juan Dog, you're down to the field. The surface is always is, um, is just as pristine as it could possibly be, but we couldn't have a much different night tonight than we had three weeks ago for the season and home opener. No wind, no rain here tonight. Yeah, the only thing that's the same is going to have a fast track. Had a great turf, the newer turf up at Northwestern. Switching back to grass, another super fast track. But you're right, the difference is the shade. There's no sun up there in that bowl at Northwestern. It was so hot. It feels beautiful. Football weather, a little bit muggy, but that's that's football. Hey, there's one thing I want to talk about. I talked to Greg Gothard, the offensive line coach, the assistant head coach down here on the field, and he said he was disappointed with the blocking last week, but he thinks this week – they had a good week of practice, but the big block, and remember E.J. Moore, that big 56-yard touchdown run? Well, he was interchanging linemen. Freshman Jonas Daniel came out and made that block like a can opener to open up that left sideline for Moore as he went for that touchdown. And he said that Daniel was supposed to get one of the defensive tackles, but it went by one of the guards, picked him up. But Daniel, just a freshman, had his heads up, went way out front, 
and block for more for that touchdown. That was really the difference in the game last week. And, Scott, to piggyback on your thought with Craig Gothard, I visited with him at midweek, and he was not at all happy in his, with his offensive line. In fact, he said they graded it 81.7%. That by far and away is the worst offensive line performance in a single game since he has been the OL coach here at Oklahoma Baptist. In fact, they have progressively gotten worse in their grades. They graded out at 91 against Washita, 89.8 against Arkansas Monticello, in 81.7 last week. He said the first eight plays of the second half last week at Alva were the worst that he has seen his offense line play at OBU. And he said, I simply told the guys, here's the deal. We're going to go to back to old school preparation. We're going to do what I did in my high school days. We're going to go through the shoots. And he said, we did that quite a bit Tuesday in practice. He said, those guys were worn out. He said, I also challenged them. I said, look, I'm going to find five guys that want to play football. And you know what? If it's not you guys, you're all tall enough. You can stand behind me and see over the top of me to watch the football game. So he was not at all happy, and I think you will see a much, much different offensive line here tonight against Southwestern. When we return, we'll hear from the head coach of Oklahoma Baptist, Chris Jensen, as our pregame show rolls along. This is Bison Football, presented by McIntyre Law on the OBU Radio Network. He was... Time now for a weekly coaches interview. Todd Miller with Chris Jensen after Oklahoma Baptist returns home following a hard-fought road victory in Northwestern last week. Coach, any win is a good win. It wasn't a perfect win, but it was a road win, and those are even harder to come by. It is, um, especially in this conference. You've got to show up and play every week, um, especially when you're on the road. And then there's all these variables associated with that. And you know, it's the first time you know we we go the day of the game, and so we have to endure a three-hour bus ride. And there's always a uh, a danger of your players kind of being lethargic when they get to the stadium, but you know I felt like we we were there ready to play. Um, you know we'd had a good week of preparation, and I felt like we took the price field, the game field. Um, obviously, there's a lot of things after we evaluated the film that we can improve on, um, but we were we were happy that we were able to make make enough plays to win and. Uh, down down the stretch. One area that was really focused was the defensive side of the football. I'm not a coach, but to me that was one of the better defensive efforts we've had around here in a while. And I thought from a physical standpoint, it was certainly one of the more physical games. It was. Uh, very proud of that whole unit and Coach Elisario and the coaches on that side of the ball. You know, they really prepared the players well. Um, and, and, you know, we've really emphasized through Ke Coach Elisario's leadership uh, of the players, you know, just anticipating things and being able to play fast. And that's what was so encouraging is, you know, as they were coming off to the sideline between series, 
you know, the players were, you know, interjecting as far as what they were seeing and what, what could happen and, you know, being ready for things on the football field. And, you know, they were completely engaged in the process. You're a former offensive lineman. You couldn't have been pleased overall with the way the offensive line played last week. But on the flip side, you had two freshmen that had their first trips to the end zone in their first 100-yard collegiate rushing games. Yeah, and that's a group effort, you know, and that's when you have that kind of effort, when you have two 100-yard rushers, somebody's doing something right. Uh, and You know, just consistency up front. You know, I know we can play a whole lot better. You know, we were really good pass blocking just in the running game. We, we, uh, when, we want, when we have to run, we need to be able to do a better job. Um, of coming off the ball and maintaining blocks. Um, and so that's something we can do. And I know Coach Gothard has worked really hard this week to, to improve on that. I thought Dayton Wolf bounced back really, really nice because that could have gone two ways. When you pull him from the game at Arkansas Monticello, he takes that personal. I thought he, he put that disappointment behind him and really took a big step forward last week. Yeah, and I think that has a lot to do with the leadership of uh, Coach Brown, Taggart. He does a great job with those guys, and he doesn't just try to – to coach the X's and O's, he tries to coach the whole player um, and, you know, how you handle different situations. And, you know, I think that he's doing a good job trying to help those guys handle all the, all, all the adversity as well as the prosperity. An area that doesn't get talked about enough, and I know that you and I have talked about this off and on over the years, even when you weren't a good football program, you said, we're going to be good in special teams. Special teams really had as much a part to win that game last week as anything. I thought, Garcia was really good on his kickoffs, his point after tries, his field goals. But then you get the turnover late in the game on special teams. Yeah, and that's an emphasis for us because of what uh, Northwestern had showed in the previous two games. They really want to put pressure on the punt team. And so, you know, that was something that kept Coach Milo up at night all week, um, just trying to prepare to, to make sure we were sound in, in that phase. And we were, and it did result in a turnover. Um, late in the game, um, which was huge for our football team. I thought one of the keys to the ball game was you never got control of it, but you never let them get control. Every time they had a, a little blink of momentum and took the lead, it seemed like this young team came right back with a response. Yeah, and that's you know there there are times that you're going to struggle offensively to move the ball. They're going to they're going to have the right call, um, but you know the thing that I think was big the other night is that the defense stood up and helped our offense get the ball back and give them more opportunities down the stretch. I know forcing turnovers is something that's a badge of pride around here. It is for every football program. You hadn't done that much in the first couple of games, but you for, for, uh, forced four last week. Yeah, and that's something that was really even more of an emphasis. It's been an emphasis since Coach has, uh arrived, but last week we put a, a larger emphasis on that, and you know we're charting turnovers in practice. We have turnover goals in practice and for the week. And then for the game, and, and so we were really pleased with the effort and, the, and how that paid off. No rest for the weary in this conference as far as facing quality quarterbacks. Brown two weeks ago, Clarkson last week, and Southwestern today is going to bring in arguably as good of an athlete as there is in this league behind center. Yeah, and he can run the ball. Um, he's, he's shown that he's, he's able to run the ball. Um, and they structure some of their offense to uh, to try to get him some yards rushing, but he's also got a really strong arm, probably a stronger arm, as accurate as the last two quarterbacks, but a stronger arm can throw the ball down the field up to 50 yards. Southwestern defensively, what have they changed with this new coaching staff? One thing they've changed, you said, is mentality. When you stop that film, there's 9, 10, 11 white hats around the football. Yeah, that's a credit to their staff and, and the emphasis they put on team pursuit they they fly the football it's almost as if it's a non-negotiable um you're when you stop the film you're going to see 11 hats in the in that film besides that mentality have they changed up a lot of schematically with a lot of returnees on that side of the ball you know they, they're running a four-man front which is probably a little bit different structurally than they did last year um but you know it's it's their team pursuit that has re that really stands out keys to beating southwestern tonight you know, we've got to take care of the football. Um, we're going to have to be successful on offense against man. Um, so, you know, our wide receivers are going to have to be able to, to win their one-on-ones and man coverage. Um, defensively, we've got to stay focused on our keys and, you know, not we can't have any busted assignments, which is what we excelled at last week. Um, you know, they're going to make plays at times, but we can't have any busted assignments that, that allows people to run open free. 
win statistic, you're dead last of the conference and third down efficiency on offense. That has to change today and going forward. You have to be able to sustain long drives. Yeah, and that's an emphasis for us. You know, it's already been pointed out by, by Coach Eaton that, you know, what we do on first down really matters. And so um, we're, we're really focused this week on trying to get into second and medium um, situations instead of second and long. Um, when you do that, and when you're making positive gains, you put yourself in third and short, and you're going to have a lot better opportunity to uh, convert those. Nate Anderson is back this week. You guys really feel good about uh, the three-headed monster now you have in the backfield. Yeah, Nate um, has really worked hard in preseason. We're just uh, we're fortunate that he's going to be back out there, a fresh set of legs, and you know just brings another dynamic to the whole offense. Kind of backing up a point that Chris Jensen and I were talking about, and that is how poor Oklahoma Baptist has been on third down conversions this year. They're dead last of the conference with only 10 conversions. They're 10 of 49 for 20%. How bad has it been? So the Nazarene is next to last in third down efficiency offensively. They are eight and a half percentage points better than the Bison. That will need to change if the win streak reaches 19 in a row against in-state competition. Guy that's had a big hand during this win streak for Oklahoma Baptist against Oklahoma schools is on deck next. He is junior linebacker Nick Boone. We'll hear from the Texas native next on the pregame show here on the Bison Radio Network. OBU and Swasu coming up at the top of the hour, the second home game of the season. We welcome in Nick Boone to our Bison Player Spotlight. And Nick, uh, you're one of the old men around here now. You're a junior athletically, an academic senior. Um, has your role changed a lot this year from what it was last year in terms of being more vocal and being more of an on-field leader? Uh, definitely. Uh, I had to step up. We've had some. We had a lot of seniors leave last year. Uh, I had to step up in a role on on and off the field, being vocal. Uh, meetings, encouraging guys all the time. Uh, it's definitely been a change, but I, I've, I, think, I think I've stepped into that role pretty nicely. Last week, I thought you went on the road and collectively maybe turned in one of your better defensive efforts since you've been around the program. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I, 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 would, agree, I would agree with that. Uh, definitely, we played a complete game. Uh, back end was play, covering well. Front end was fitting their gaps. Uh, we talk about always it's complimentary. Uh, we always... Talk about if the front end is getting to the quarterback quick, the back end doesn't have to cover as much. Back end covers well, we can get to the quarterback. It's a complimentary game. Seems like this is a much more physical defense than maybe it's been in the past. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Uh, Coach Gabe, uh, he, he always we always enforce in practice 
uh, just doing everything at 100%, being physical, uh, get, trying to get turn, turnovers, uh, interceptions, punching the ball out. We just reinforce things like physicality, and that's where you get big hits from. Coach Gabe is Gabe Elisario, the first-year defensive coordinator. He actually came to the Bison from rival Southeastern in the middle of spring practice last year. How has that change been? And I would think you probably still are learning him, and he's learning a lot about you guys. Yeah, we're, we're starting to get it together. Uh, it was definitely, he, th he threw a lot at us, trying to see if, what we could do. And I think we, we're starting to figure out what we could play fast at, what we're, what we're good at. And uh, we're going we're gonna to go with what we're good at and keep on running that. Last year, you played more of just a straight-up linebacker position. Early in the year, maybe more so than even last week, you were a moving chess piece. They moved a lot of guys around the field and, and put them in different positions. You enjoyed that, multiple roles, but it also meant a lot of work on your plate. Yeah, uh, definitely. We were, we were trying to game plan for the teams. Uh, we had a Wachita game one and Monticello game two. Uh, we knew they liked to run, the, or Wachita liked to run the ball, so we had a lot of chess pieces moving. But I think going forward, we're going to try to start um, playing with what we're good at, playing with what we know. Defensively, you guys going into last week had played eight quarters. Four of those very good, the other four not so good. What does it take now for you guys to be focused for, on that side of the football for a full four quarters? Uh, everyone needs to do their job. Uh, that was the major thing that we talked about, uh, being consistent in your fits, doing your job only, not trying to do other people's jobs, uh, trusting your teammates, uh, just things we, we do at practice. It starts in practice, and we carry it over to the games the way we play. Having been with this program now for almost two decades, I think that's the biggest thing I've noticed over time, Nick, is the, the increased trust on your side of the football um, from year to year. Yeah, definitely a lot of trust. Um, we, we get a lot of reps in practice. Uh, we go over... <laughs> fits fits we practice our fits over and over again and that's that's what's going to get us going that's what's going to get us a win closing in on your degree here from oklahoma baptist you're a senior academically listed as a junior athletically it is a challenge to be a student athlete at this university isn't it yeah definitely uh practice takes up a lot of time throughout the week and uh weekends you know we got a game on sunday so but uh, it's something you have to learn to balance. Uh, definitely, it's a learning curve, but you got to figure it out. For sure. Allen, Texas junior, Nick Boone at linebacker, third in the conference last year in total tackles, fifth this year on the depth, on the uh, team at Oklahoma Baptist in stops. A trip around the Great American Conference. Kickoff is just around the corner from Shawnee at Southwestern at Oklahoma Baptist tonight on the Bison Football Network.
Complex, Todd Miller, Scott Wattis, John Brooks, John Zonlow. Kickoff still about five minutes away for Southwestern and Oklahoma Baptist. A couple of notes, Elijah Tomlin had a career-high nine tackles last week at Alba. He's the first Bison player in the Division II era to have two fumble recoveries in a single game as well. Trajan Lands, now we said on the broadcast that he had eclipsed 200 tackles going in the game at Northwestern, he needed just two, but officially was not credited with a stop, so his tackle count holds at 198, two away from becoming the first Bison defensive secondary player with more than 200 stops in his career. And the ever-improving Chase White Bear, five tackles, two for a loss, a pass breakup and an interception. He is the fourth freshman to record a, a pick. Uh, in a game, but the first since Felipe Alviar did it against Southern Arkansas in 2018. The others landed roulette against Harding in 17, and he landed Colton against Southwestern in 2016. The Bison have made their way out of the field in anticipation of hopefully a 19th consecutive win against an in-state football opponent. Around the Great American Conference, the game of the night will kick off an hour after we get underway. It's in Arkadelphia, top 10 battle between number seven, Harding, and number nine, Washita. Everything else starts at six o'clock tonight of the conference, including in Durant, where Southern Nazarene is at Southeastern, Arkansas Tech is at Arkansas Monticello, and Northwestern is just down the road tonight at Ada against East Central. The captains are meeting. We'll read that. We'll have the kickoff when we return. You've been listening to the McIntyre Law pregame show on the Bison Radio Network. I know what you're missing. These are these these are mine, but you can have them. Because I I look for yours because I didn't want to get my briefcase. Well, use it. I've got I've got the originals, so those are yours. First and the Bison, the gray and black and green uniforms will go from right to left here in the first half. Swasu visiting South or Oklahoma Baptist for the first time under new head coach Josh Kirkland, who spent the last two years in Las Vegas, New Mexico, as head coach of the Highlands Cowboys. Here we go. Set to kick off for Southwestern is Jaron Van Winkle, and we are underway. It's a line drive kick. It'll be scooped up at the five by Harris. Keelan to the 10 to the 15, trying to get to the corner, cannot, and he'll be tackled immediately at the 20 yard line by Kenny Graham. Before the first snap, let's step aside for stations to identify themselves. This is Bison Football on the OBU Radio Network. Return of 10 for Harris to the 15. I said the 20, it was the 15, so not great starting field position for the Bison. And a good look out there is Jackson Landsteiner, the center, is back out there. Out of the gun is Dayton Wolf. First play of the evening. It's a handoff. Coming left is E.J. Moore, and he does not have any running room. He is stopped immediately, and that's going to bring up second down and 10. 
I'm not sure he wanted to run where he went. I think he wanted to come right up the middle off guard. Everything was plugged. He had to come outside, and he got nothing. Second down and 10 for Oklahoma Baptist. First down has been a problem. That's the reason they're dead last in third down conversions. Back to throw inside the 10 is Wolf. Pocket holds. Now he's going to move left. Flips it over the near side looking for Phipps, who was well defended that time by Deontay Scott, the quarter at coverage. And here we go, guys. Another third down and long. One of the reasons Oklahoma Baptist is 20% on third third down success. But what a wise play by Dayton Wolf. Great pocket, as you mentioned. A lot of time to throw, but everybody's covered. DeAndre Scott looked like he was inside the jersey of Braden Phipps. Bazell actually carried on first down. He is out there offset now to the right of Dayton Wolf. Bison need to get to the 25 to keep the drive alive. Here comes the pressure. Wolf steps up. He's under duress and Wolf is going to be sacked as the pressure got home. They'll get him down at the 12 yard line so it's a loss of three on the first sack of the night allowed by Oklahoma Baptist and what a great defensive start for Southwestern after they gave up 58 points last week at home against Southeastern. A junior from Indianapolis, Indiana, Johnny Scales, 315 pounds all over him. Deep to receive the punt for Swasu is Jalen Lampley. He is a native of Sacramento, California. Here is Braden Phipps who runs right, line drive kick, hits at the 36, turns over to the 45, and now will roll dead in Southwestern territory at the 46-yard line. It was not pretty, as most of Phipps are not, but it was effective. Still good starting field position for the Bulldogs and their Division I transfer at quarterback after a 43-yard punt. As Southwestern went after that punt, scouting knowing that Phipps is a rugby-style kicker, he carries that ball, runs about six yards to the right, so they stacked the left side of the line and they came, it wasn't too far. The quarterback is Tylen Morton, 6'4", 215, a graduate student out of Griffin, Georgia. And we will have our first media timeout with 13.37 to play here in the first quarter. There's no score between Swasu and OBU on the Bison Radio Network. Opening series for Oklahoma Baptist. That's Midas three. Southwestern will start at the 46. The Bulldogs last week had quite a week. They fell 58-48 at uh, Weatherford to southeastern Oklahoma State. In doing so, the Bulldogs and their quarterback Tyler Morton threw for five touchdowns. However, the secondary allowed five touchdown passes from Dalton Hatley of the Savage Store. That's why it almost totaled 100, right? The yep. Points. Wild, wild game. Yeah. Incidentally, our refereeing crew tonight, led by the referee Ken Roan, Frank Wittenberg is the umpire, Brett Hilton is the head linesman, Lindsey Smith the side judge, Derek Smith the line judge, Sean Austin the field judge, and the back judge is Chris Hine. Here we go, Oklahoma Baptist will start with a three-man defensive front. In the pistol is Dexter Brown, the graduate student from Tampa, Florida, another D1 transfer. Bison trying to get home and get some pressure on Tyler Morton. Morton gets the snap of the first offensive play of the night as a pass. He'll float one deep down the field, and it is just out of the reach that time of Deshaun Moreau. Moreau, a six-foot, 190-pound senior from Beaumont, Texas, could not quite get up to that football. But there, Juan Dog is the arm strength that Chris Jensen has been talking about all week. Yeah, on the post, Moreau runs the post. Got a few steps away from Tyler King. If that ball was just a little bit less, that's a touchdown. Second down at 10, pistol formation. This time they fake the handoff, throw it out left. Israel Watson is hit in behind the line. They're going to get to him for a yard loss to the 45. And we talk about Swasu swarming the football one dog. There was a bunch of green helmets around Israel Watson. Great job by Tyler King, who actually got beat on the previous play. But Tyler King was the first guy there. He's the cornerback. 
had contained. Third down and 12. They're going to give him a loss of two to the 44-yard line. Swasu needs to get to the 44 of the Bison, and OBU jumped. It's a free play for Morton. Morton will throw it up deep left sideline, and the ball is incomplete. Tyler King was in coverage, and once more, they were looking for Cameron Hairston. So we've already seen them feature three different receivers, two on deep balls against Tyler King here in the early goings. Yeah, Nick Boone, the linebacker on the left side, he was way off sides. As you mentioned, a free play. And I tell you, if, if that throw is just a little less, it's another touchdown. Got past Tyler King again. Moreau, Watson, Karsik have each had touchdowns receiving in the last two games for Southwestern. So they will spread the football around. Third down and seven, just shy of midfield for the Bulldogs. They hand it off straight ahead, nothing doing for Dexter Brown. Second effort, he squirts out and gets to the 47-yard line again at a four, but it's going to bring up fourth down and short with 12-41 to play here in the opening quarter. Elijah Tomlin, the first linebacker for the Bison there on the tackle. I think the Bulldogs, in a way, did the Bison a favor. The Bison having a hard time stopping the run, throwing those long passes, but they didn't miss by much for the home run. On to punt is Jaron Van Winkle on the season. 18 punts for an average of 41. His long is the second longest in program history, a 79-yarder against Southern Arkansas in the Bulldogs' only victory. That was in Weatherford back in week two. Deep to receive, Keelan. Harris at the 10. Van Winkle gets a right leg into it. It's a high wobbly punt, not real far, and it's going to hit at the 20 or 15 yard line and roll out of bounds. So it'll be a punt timeout. of 32 yards, and we'll get a media timeout with 12.02 to play here in the first quarter. Bison about to scrimmage for the second time. There's no score between Southwestern and Oklahoma Baptist on the OBU Football Radio Network. OBU fans, do you want the chance to support OBU student athletes from the convenience of your own mobile device? Text hashtag BAA at OBU to the number 52014 to support BAA student athletes. Donations are fully tax deductible, and every gift makes a difference in the OBU student athlete's life. Again, text hashtag BAA at OBU to the number 52014. For more information, log on to OBUBison.com. Pretty decent Saturday night crowd on to watch the 26th meeting all time in football between Swasu and OBU. Good contingent of Bulldog fans making the two hour trek from southwestern Oklahoma. Late arriving crowd here on the homestand. Most are still under the hospitality suite tents at the north end here of the stadium. So both teams did not do much on their opening drive. OBU went backwards minus three. Southwestern, after a loss on second down, ended up picking up a net of seven of their first drive, despite taking a couple of deep shots down the far side boundary. It's fun, isn't it, to do the body language thing? Look at the body language of Tyler Morton. He's a grad. He's a D1 transfer, right? You know what? You can see it in the body language. Yeah, good point, John. First and 10 at the 15-yard line. Bison will scrimmage again for the right hash at the 15. Second straight drive. They started deep in their own end of the field. The tight end is lined up left with receivers split both ways. They fake the handoff, and Wolf's in trouble, and the pressure gets home again. And they have sacked him for a second time for a loss of six back inside the 10. You know your comment? From the offensive line coach, pregame show, he might be yelling a little bit more. What do you think? Christian Tulu was the one that managed to get home. He is out of the American Samoa. That's his second sack. Yeah, I think you're right. The first two series have not been anything that Greg Gothard's going to be happy about. There's just not much time, and the coverage has been downfield against Wolf, the freshman. They split the backs in the backfield. Now Braden Phipps, or excuse me, uh, they'll motion to the near side. The ball is caught behind the line of scrimmage and turning upfield at the 15 to the 16-yard line. And on the catch for the Bison that time was Nate Anderson, who was wearing 15 and not number two. Anderson did a good job. The wheel route, he was naked. No blocker in front of him. Sidestepped that first defender, got five yards. It's third down and nine at the 16. Southwestern showing blitz again, and here they come against Wolf. He drops to the five, pump fakes. Now the freshman's going to take off, and he's struck down before he can get to the first down marker. At the 21-yard line after he took off, it looked like he would get to the 26, which would be enough for the first down. 
He had Michael Marshall on a slant upfield, a post at the 40. Marshall got literally held by the cornerback, never had a chance to get free. If he gets free off of that block, he was open for the score. Lampley already has a 65-yard punt return for a score the season opening loss at Henderson State. Coming in, he's returned two punts for an average of 33 and a half. Here is Phipps punt deep in the end zone. Block. It's blocked, and it's rolling free. OBU picks it up, and Southwestern has him dead to right. It was blocked, and then it was picked up by Chance Brookshire, and Southwestern special teams have been special at times, bad at other times, and the good special teams just reared its ugly head here to the Bison faithful. I believe it was uh, Keldrick Martin who got in there and got the block. Did it's you Ashton, agree? Ashton Hamby, oh, okay. number 15. All right. That, once again, the Bulldogs, they overloaded that side, knowing that Phipps is a rugby-style kicker running there. That time, Ham, Hamby got right there. Easy block for the Bulldogs. Guys, I've heard opposing coaches say they think they can get to Braden Phipps, and there's oh. been close calls. So this time, he didn't get away with it. Out of the eye, they'll... Handed off straight ahead to Dexter Brown. There is nothing to do. It is Alexia Tomlin stepped up and dropped him for a loss of two just inside the 10-yard line. That's twice Elijah Tomlin's the first man there. Looks like he's a man on a mission there in the linebacking core. Elijah Tomlin, we told you the pregame show, had a career-high nine tackles last week at Northwestern. Second down at goal to go. They sweep right with Brown. He's hit. What a tackle. Oh, my goodness. K.J. Price, who was shaken up in the Second half last week at Northwestern came in and with terrific form just dropped Dexter Brown in his tracks. And the aggressiveness, KJ Price from the left side has looked like a run blitz or a, just some kind of blitz. Price full speed in there with all kinds of aggression. 9 18 to go, opening quarter Southwestern with a golden opportunity, but the third and goal to go at the OBU 11. In motion to the far side, Troy Henderson back to throw. Tylen Morton throws a slant in the end zone and it's underthrown. And that was Henderson out of the backfield when he was open. So a great defensive stand by Gabe Elisario's unit. And at worst, it would appear they're going to allow three points. Yeah, Tyler, Aaron, go ahead. Tyler Morton used a sidearm throw for some reason. You're right, in the back of the end zone, he had Troy Henderson open. Nick Boone was the closest man there, but it was a low sidearm throw right in the dirt. Calvin Cloud to spot it. At the 18 to 28 yard field goal, plenty of leg for Van Weekle and Southwestern strikes first after the block punt, but all they can manage is three. 9.06 to play here in the first quarter at Southwestern three, Oklahoma Baptist nothing. We'll step aside for this local break on the Bison Radio Network. Estate planning. It's been Jackson Siring that has been the kickoff man and not Van Winkle. This one is short. It's going to be returned across the 30 up to the 40-yard line. And by far and away the best starting field position, guys, for the Bison. And it has been Gabe Elisario's defense that have had their backs to the wall with Swasu having good starting field position each of the last two times. And it's still just 3 nothing. No doubt a win for the OBU defense after the block punt inside the 15-yard line. Uh, to force three and out, three and a kick anyway. Of course, it's three points. That's uh, a special teams for the dogs. 8.59 to play. First quarter, 3 nothing. Southwestern out of the gun again is Dayton Wolf. He gets the snap back. Now he hands it off to Buddy Bazell. Runs straight up the middle and manages two to the 42-yard line. And, boy, the sledding has been tough between the tackles tonight for Oklahoma Baptist on the ground game. 
Second down at eight at the 42-yard line. OBU trying to answer the first score of the night, a 27-yard Jared Van Winkle field goal coming on the heels of a block punt by Southwestern. Mazzell in the backfield. In a pistol look, two receivers right, including Harris. One left, they keep it on the ground again with Buddy Mazzell. And Buddy Mazzell runs into, it's E.J. Moore, not Mazzell. And Courtney Ledyard is the one that jumps on his back and then finally drags him to the ground after a gain of three to the 45. So it's third down and five. OBU going quickly down three nothing as we played exactly seven minutes here this opening quarter in this Saturday night affair from Crane Family Stadium in the Hurt Athletic Complex. Tied in right, free play for Wolf. Southwestern jump, they'll throw deep left, and the ball is caught on the near side boundary by Michael Marshall. He one-handed it in on great coverage that time by DeAndre Scott. What well, was a remarkable catch, guys? It was a terrific throw. And smart play by Dayton Wolf, recognizing he had a free play a southwestern bulldog in the neutral zone he uncorks it knows where marshall going down the left sideline deandre scott is holding his jersey that's how great that catch by marshall was even though he's fought off with the right hand scott and pulled that football 36 in. yards on the catch and that is the second longest pass play of the year for dayton wolf and the longest reception for michael marshall of the season split backs now nate anderson motions to the far side over the middle Wolf looking to the end zone for Harris, who was wide open, and he overthrew it. Harris has seen double coverage for the third straight weekend after having the second most receiving yards in a game in school history, 179 against Washita here at opening night. Well, it was double coverage, but it was in his rearview mirror. He was so far behind everybody, that ball just overthrown. Boy, that's a shame. Michael Marshall's previous long before that catch was just 18. Wolf would like to have that throw back. Second and 10 of the 19. Sam Sharp tied in right. Handoff goes to E.J. Moore. Gaping hold of the 10, and Moore is ridden down just shy of the five-yard line. will bring up first down and goal to go on a run of 14 by E.J. Nice vision by E.J. Moore running behind right guard. Hat runs into the Southwestern linebacker, sidesteps him to the left for the big game. Bison offense, eighth of the conference in red zone efficiency. They're seven of ten, five touchdowns, two field goals. They'll line up against the sixth best red zone defense through three weeks in Southwestern, who has allowed ten touchdowns, seven on the ground. First and goal to go from officially the sixth. Hand off to Moore, makes a cut in the backfield. Boy, he looked like he was going to be dropped and somehow picked up a couple to the four-yard line. Let's go back to previous play, though. That's the first time today Greg Gothard's had a chance to really smile, the offensive line coach. Devin Mack, a sophomore from Lantana, Texas, is coming to the ball game along the right side of the line of scrimmage. Josiah Drain, 87, has come in. Buddy Bazell now is in the lineup as well with 6.41 to play here in the first quarter. 3 0 Southwestern, but the Bison threatening to take their first lead. Bazell in the backfield, out of a Wildcat, gets the snap. Buddy raises, throws a little short, touchdown, Oklahoma Baptist. Second straight week, we've seen Daniel. He can go to his bag of tricks and have someone other than Dayton Wolf throw a touchdown pass. Last week, it was Keelan Harris to Dayton. Today, it was Buddy Bazell to Sam Sharp. Yeah, I love the <laughs> trick plays. Great job. All the Bulldogs bid on that handoff to Bazell. Bazell just stands there. Sam Sharp releases off the right side of the tight end. For an easy score. Here's Guillermo Garcia, his perfect night of nine on extra points this season to give OBU a four-point lead. All this at the north end. The snap is back, a little low. The ball is down. Garcia approaches, and he is now 10 for 10 on point after tries with 6.32 to play in the first quarter. Folks, there's your answer, 7-3 Bison. Hey, I love the way they answered, too. It looked like Buddy Bazell had just stepped inside the three-point line and put a nice little jump shot right over everybody into the backfield. Shepard was there. There wasn't anybody even close. That's a great call, a lot of fun. It's fun to see the recipient and the passer in that situation, both of them enjoying the moment. All right, congratulations if you're playing Bison Bingo the last two weeks and you've had a <laughs> touchdown pass from Harris and now one for Bazell. You are a winner. Forget about five in a row. I like what John said. It was just kind of like a little lob pass. Sam Sharp was uncovered. All the Bulldogs were up on the line rushing. So why throw a hard bullet in there? Just lay it in there for him, let him grab it. 
and he had plenty of time. He could have thrown it 10 more feet in the air to you. It still would have gotten into him. Hey, John, let's not get carried away. Okay, I'm sorry. Guillermo, Go Guillermo, Go Guillermo Garcia last week's six kickoffs for an average of 53. His second best kickoff week of the year. We'll spot it at the 35, and here we go. 7-3 OBU. He swings his leg, and this will be a touchback. And well, how about the leg there for Guillermo Garcia? That is his fifth touchdown and his third in as many weeks. That is the most impressive kickoff Garcia's had this season. There's was, no win. Exactly. Because at Northwestern, you had that 30 mile, 35 mile per hour gust yeah. going into that direction. He had four or five of those. <laughs> There's no win basically at all out there. And he just missed getting that free pizza too from Marcus Pizza because he just missed the bounce. The ball just bounded wide of the sign. Yeah, yeah. and that's four yards behind the back line. Yeah, exactly. First and 10, Swasu at the 25-yard line. 7-3, to three, Oklahoma Baptist. They fake the handoff. They'll throw it out left. Israel Watson down the numbers, breaking tacklers, dragging defenders with him. Elijah Tomlin should be charged a fair for the ride he just took, <laughs> and that's right at the first down marker at the 35. Caleb Peters on the tackle with uh, Tomlin. I think he got a little bit of a ride as well. Caleb Peters played really well two weeks ago here against Arkansas Monticello. Back to the ground game, they'll hand it off. I think that's Troy Henderson again. Henderson has taken away most of the carries from Dexter Brown the last couple of weeks, and he's been primarily the ball carrier tonight for the Bulldogs, picking up just one, setting it up second down at nine. Peter Papula and again Elijah Tomlin at the point of attack. The Bison looked great against the run so far. 5.49 and counting to play. First quarter, 7-3. to three. Our first quarter brought to you by Noble McIntyre. Handoff again goes to Henderson. He dives down at the 41-yard line. A gain of five brings up manageable third down and short. Southwest. On third down conversions coming into this ball game was ninth in the conference, so they have had problems as well. 16 to 50, 32 percent. They're 0 for 2 on third down tries tonight. This is third and four at their own 41 yard line. Handoff again, and picking his way short of the first down yardage is Gerald Palmer. A redshirt freshman from Paris, Texas, wearing number 34. A standing run defense by Tyler King. He's the right quarterback, and he jumps in there. They quickly hand it to uh, Palmer again. He breaks tackles, going behind left tackle. It is all the way down to the 47 of OBU. That was a very, very quick snap by Josh Kirkland's offense. So yeah, he really didn't have a chance to Probably caught set. everybody off a little bit on that one. He kind of wandering around thinking they're going to punt the football. That was never a thought. So first and 10 Bulldogs on the plus side of the field of the 47-yard line. Gerald Palmer remains out there with the setback. Southwestern with trips to the near side. Here comes the blitz off the edge. They pick it up, and now Morton will throw off of his back foot, and it's caught at the 10 and in for the touchdown. Cameron Hairston meet the coverage that time from Caleb Peters, and that ball, despite being thrown off of his back foot, guys, was perfectly thrown. Yeah, Tyson Johnson was deep center on that play, allowed the receiver to get way behind him. Tyler King tried to come over and help from the cornerback position. Longest pass play for Swasu, 60. For Harrison, he was the recipient of that target. That one goes for 47, and it's 9-7, to seven, pending Jared Van Winkle's extra point of the south end. Snap back, ball down, kick in the air, and OBU just nearly blocked it, but the kick is good. Boy, Matt Norman just missed blocking that extra point. Well, one thing that wasn't a miss was that uh, bomb. I mean, perfectly thrown at least four steps behind both Peters and King. And this is the fourth time in the first quarter, and there's still 4.30 to play, that we've seen a bomb that could have been a touchdown. He's now 25% because he could have got it on the other three, too. And that's my lecture, and I'm sticking to it. What do you think? I think that's correct. Thank you. And there's going to be more to come. At Southwestern's uh, setting up the run. I mean, setting up the bomb with those uh, handoffs up the middle. And this quarterback coming from D1, he doesn't want to hand it off. He came here to let it loose. Ninth touchdown pass. It is one and only season at Swasu for Tyler, Tyler Morton. That was a six-play drive that went 75 yards to funnel 47. 
to Harrison for the touchdown. Now Van Winkle is going to sky kick it to the near side, and OBU is going to return it to the 40, almost broke it out to the 41, maybe the 42-yard line, as that was Jackson Kennard, who two weeks ago at UAM had his first Bison touchdown on the ground. He looked hesitant, though, one dog. He almost put his arm up to make a fair catch. I think he did put the fair catch, and the officials missed it. That should have been a penalty on the Bison. But the reason why you got that pooch kick is because the previous kickoff, Keelan Harris took it 20-something yards yeah, all the way up near the 40-yard line. OBU are ready, ready to snap the ball. Southwestern's defense just now coming out of the field. First down and 10, Oklahoma Baptist to throw 45, 10-7 Swasso. The most in Sam Sharp to the far side. He has the only point, a touchdown for OBU tonight. Rolling right as Wolf throws on the run across the way, and it's off of the fingertips of Harris incomplete. And up immediately to signal incomplete was the defender in coverage for Southwestern. I love the play call by offensive coordinator Daniel Eaton. You just get burned by a bomb. Instead of just handing off up the middle, you try to get it all back. Just a little bit of a miss. That's going to stretch out the defense for a good running play. Keelan Harris, Braden Phipps, Julian Clark are all wide to the far side. Michael Marshall in the slot to the near side. It's a four-man defensive front for Swasu. Wolf gets the snap. Pressure breaking down, and down he goes. That's a sack, but you know who it belongs to? The defensive those, backs. Uh, yeah, those defensive backs. I mean, they. there was absolutely. Absolutely no place to throw. Loss of seven of the third southwestern sack of Dayton Wolf here in the first quarter. So it's going to bring up third down at 17 back at the Bison 38-yard line. You know, Todd, you can look and say, well, that offensive line having trouble. You know what? They actually gave him enough time. He just simply had no place to go. Good point. Sharp tight end right. E.J. Moore offset to the left of Dayton Moore or Dayton Wolf. Dayton Moore is no longer in Kansas City, thank goodness. <laughs> Wolf is still here. Wolf drops back to the 28, dodges two defenders, rolling right. And now he's going to throw it over the middle. He's going to receive it by Michael Marshall for a first down at the 45 of Southwestern. And Marshall will angle out of bounds. There is a flag back downfield, and it is well behind the play at OBU's already starting to retreat as the marker was thrown at the 30. That's a good leaping catch, though, by Michael Marshall. And good job by Wolf, too. Uh, had a great pocket on the left side. Zach Frazier dominated the defensive end, had no chance to get away from Frazier. And then Wolf just rolled out to the right and a nice pass and a snag. Well, they're going to go An eligible receiver downfield, you think? That happens a lot of times when you have a quarterback scrambling around that way. Here's Ken Rohn. Good holding. Number seven. Is to, well, illegal forward pass. Number nine. The Illegal forward pass. They say he was a beyond the line of scrimmage. He was going laterally toward the right boundary. I don't. I didn't see him go forward very much at all. Oh, you know what? I think. I think he did pass. Yeah. Well, obviously he passed over it. They just threw the flag, but no. Well, either yeah, way, I'm, I'm following well. the play, and I'm looking at the at the front side of the of the uh, chains. Yeah. 25-yard pass play wiped away. Here is Phipps to punt back at his own 20. Here comes Southwestern again. Brayton this time doesn't run. Look at this kick. It's his best punt of the season. Hits inside the 20, is picked up, and now all the way back inside the five-yard line. Over you has the returner, Jalen Lampley, dead to right. They'll tackle him at the four-yard line. How about that punt by the former Jinx Trojan? Braden Phipps. Peyton Russell on the tackle. Didn't let the punt returner get out of anywhere. Peyton Russell has made a living as a special teams player here at OBU. And just on plays like that, getting down the field as the deep snapper. Todd, that's a 55-yard punt that the guy receives over his shoulder and then runs the, the, the right way, the wrong way for him, the right way for the bison. But it was 55 in the air. Listen, when he can get that punt off, that rugby stuff, that rugby stuff uh, uh, punt, he can do something with it. Split backs to each side. They fake the handoff, flip it out left. Israel Morton is hemmed in, gets across the 10 to the 11-yard line, pushed back a small gain of four. And I don't know if you noticed it, but Braden really didn't rugby-style kick very much. He only took one step to his right and then just booted the ball away. 
I'm, vo I'm voting for one step to the right I kicks agree. from now on. Gain of three officially to the 10. Brings up second down at seven. Late first quarter, 10-7 Southwestern. Hand off up the middle again to Troy Henderson trying to fill his way behind Chase Parker, the redshirt freshman at right guard. He manages three, and that cuts the margin at half. It's third down and short for Southwestern. Hey, the Bison doing a good job uh, in the A and B gaps. Southwestern can't get any running room there. Wide receivers left and right, back to throw and play action pass as Morton, he's in trouble. He's able to get free of one defender and will not get free of a second to go swallow him under at the four yard line. Nick Boone, who's our guest on our pregame show, gets home and a big play and now there's some join. These two teams quite honestly don't like each other and late flags come in. They didn't like each other last year. They didn't like each other two years ago. Want to keep going, they still don't like each other. No. It's not a rivalry you would think would be naturally made between a public and a private school, but for some reason these two just absolutely do not like each other on the gridiron. Might be a horse collar tackle. That's the play was over. The dead ball. <laughs> dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct against Southwestern. The mic was cutting out of uh, Ken Road. OBU will take the penalty, so it's going to bring up. It should be fourth down. It was a dead ball penalty, and the line of scrimmage now will be back at the three-yard line. Yeah, Bison Xavier Lau was pulling like a horse collar. I think he was indicating to the official that he was being held. Well, this is dangerous for Jaron Van Winkle. He almost has the heels of his feet on the back line at the north end zone. OBU has 10, and they're coming after the punt. Van Winkle gets a decent punt off. Harris will wave for a fair catch, and he makes it near the 37-yard line. So under heavy duress with a terrible field position to punt from, he manages to get a 35-yard punt off. thing I like is, you know, some guys who can break tackles on returns, they look at that situation, and if you don't control your ego, you say, hey, I'm taking this baby and go. You know what? He took, the, he took the fair catch. He didn't take any chance. They got great field position. He could have gambled a little bit coming up on the run and taking that. He made a real smart play, Keelan Harris. 140 to play opening period, 10-7 Swasa. Yeah, I talked to Jason Milo a couple weeks ago. He was working with Harris to, to make the right decisions. OBU starts at the Southwestern 38-yard line, the handoff. In the backfield today to Anderson, he's hit twice, three times, and finally the fourth defender knocks him to the ground for a loss back to the 42, and that was Logan Engel, the linebacker, a sophomore from Salina, Texas. Good job by Anderson not to go down that first time for two loss, yards of two. This, he, he loses three yards on the second time. Guys, it is impossible to do anything offensively without the help of a big play when you cannot win on first down. This team has just been terrible on first down now through almost three and a half games. Tied in right, back to throw from midfield as Wolf throws left, ball caught. That's Anderson, breaks a tackler at the 35, and then is tackled at the 29-yard line, a yard short of the first down. He slipped free of Deontay Scott and then finally was dropped to the ground. Nice route. By Richard Silva. Nice route by Anderson on the the corner route, perfect pass by Wolf. Third down and a yard at the 29. Southwestern jumps. It's another free play. Wolf was going to throw it up for Harris inside the five, and Harris in double coverage had it poked away from behind. But that will give Oklahoma Baptist a first down via the penalty since Wasu jumped. Defense, number 52, Marquis Cunningham, the junior from Tracy, California, in was the one that was guilty of the infraction. So OBU will pick up a first down. That is just their sixth via the penalty, and that is the fourth fewest of such penalties by teams at the Great American Conference. Line of scrimmage at the 24. Phipps and Sharp to the near side. Hand off to Anderson. He spins. Look at Nate go. Boy, he looks healthy. And Nate Anderson. Did a lot for three yards as he was punished at the 21. Great job by Anderson. Defensive end, Courtney Ledyard on the left side had him, but Anderson hopped inside of him for the game. 12 seconds to play in the first quarter. OBU looks like they're going to snap it one more time. Down 10-7 late to Southwestern in the opening quarter. Back to throw. 
Wolf throws a down and out. Harris with his first catch out of bounds inside the 10 yard line. And now they will have one more opportunity to get in the end zone as the clock stops with two ticks to go in the period. How about that man to man coverage? Darius Franklin on Keelan Harris. I bet on Harris. He did a perfect uh, out route. Hard up the field, stuck his toe in the ground, straight out toward the right side. Guys, what you're seeing is what the coaches told me about Dayton Wolf when he won the job. He has all the throws. He just has to have time to throw the football. And that will be the end of the first quarter. 15 minutes in the books. At the end of one, Southwestern leads by three, but the Bison have it first and goal to go when we return. The first quarter has been brought to you by Noble McIntyre, McIntyre Law on the OBU Football Radio Network. Estate planning is a crucial step in protecting your family's future. With an estate plan, you can decide how to distribute your assets, make health care decisions, and support ministries after you pass away. It involves some pretty big decisions, but with guidance from Water's Edge, you can plan for your children's future, give to kingdom causes, and get expert help along the way. Build a solid foundation for your family. Start your estate plan today. Visit watersedgeservices.org. OBU Athletics and First United Bank are now excited to announce that First United Bank is the official banking partner of OBU Athletics. Visit their North Harrison Street location today and ask about how you can make a statement with the OBU debit card. How can you describe Whataburger's Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich? The chicken just has a certain... And then there's the sauce that just gives you a little bit of... And the cheese? It's the exact right amount of... It's almost too hard to put it into... Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. The Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich. Todd Miller, Scott Wattis, John Brooks, John Zonlo. Good win between Swasu and OBU. 10-7 Bulldogs. OBU has it first to goal to go at the 10. Now attacking the goal line of the south end in the play in the second uh, period. And Wolf under pressure is buried as he got the football off. And the ball was deflected and fluttered incomplete. Southwestern Scott that time just drove Devin Mack, the right guard out there, back into the face of Wolf. Yeah, and then the defensive end, Courtney Ledyard, I think he's the guy that got the big paw up to deflect that pigskin. Bison, one of one of the red zone tonight. Second down and 10. Harris motions to the far side. Gives straight ahead to Anderson. Dodges one defender. Now dives down at the eight, giving two third and goal to go. Just a half minute deep into the second quarter. Are we going to see another one of those little trick plays down here? It's worked well the last two weeks in the red zone. Daniel Eaton next door, going through the play sheet, waiting to get the play called in. It's like having to draft a player in your fantasy football league, and that clock is winding down, isn't it? <laughs> only, only this has has a lot more importance. Yeah. <laughs> you think? <laughs> 12 or 14, 12 to play here with the first half. Third down and eight. Split backs in the backfield. Anderson and E.J. Moore. Fake handoff. They swing it out to Anderson. He one-hands the catch. Nate trying to dodge a defender is hitting at the 10. And dropped for a two-yard loss. Darius Franklin didn't make the tackle, but he was the one that slowed up the play. Well, he swung it out there, but it won't go in the sti in the statistics for a pass. That goes in as a lateral and a run because that was he was like three yards behind uh, the pass. First quarter, Dayton Wolf or Dayton Wolf was four of seven passing for 65 yards. Here's Guillermo Garcia on a right hash 27-yard field goal attempt to draw Oklahoma Baptist even. Russell the snap. Phipps to hold. Ball is back. It is down. The kick is on the way. And plenty of leg for Guillermo Garcia. And the game is tied at 10 with 13-24 to play here in the first half. The exact spot from the Southwestern uh, field goal. Both of them right there. 27 yarders at the south end. Tied at 10. Time out for this message for the OBU College of Graduate and Professional Studies of the Bison Radio Network. Before I came to McIntyre Law, I worked for an insurance company that defends cases. That experience provides me insight into how insurance companies operate. That knowledge helps me get the most for our clients. For way too long, insurance companies and major corporations have pushed around hardworking Oklahomans. McIntyre Law pushes back. If you need someone that tries cases and doesn't just settle, call McIntyre Law for a meeting at no cost to you. 
We are McIntyre Law and we'll fight for you. OBU fans, do you want the chance to support OBU student athletes from the convenience of your own mobile device? Text hashtag BAA at OBU to the number 52014 to support BAA student athletes. Donations are fully tax deductible and every gift makes a difference in the OBU student athlete's life. Again, text hashtag BAA at OBU to the number 52014. For more information, log on to OBUBison.com. Minneapolis, Gerald Palmer, 18 for Southwestern. Tylen Morton was 4 of 6 for 59 yards, a 47-yard touchdown included in those stats. Dayton Wolf through the air for the Bison, 4 of 7 for 65, his longest 35, but he has been sacked three times already. Well, that been a beautiful night here on the hill. Very little wind. What wind was at kickoff was out of the south-southwest at about 5, which means Garcia would kick into that breeze. His first kickoff tonight sailed through the back of the north end zone for the touchback. Yermo looks right. He looks left. He will approach from 8 yards, swings the leg, and kicks it away. This will hang up. And on the near side boundary, it's going to be caught and then out of bounds that time on a poor decision by Taylon Garrett, a Thank wide you. receiver. Yeah, all he has to do is just step away and let the ball go out of bounds. Now it's at the 16. It would have been at the 35. Well, he did a good job. He kept both feet in bounds. Yeah, he catch. did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, though, Guillermo has got to quit kicking to the sidelines. He has kicked a ball out of bounds in and it's been on plays just like that, trying to work the boundary. Got the old bailout from the Bulldogs. She did. First to 10, Swasu at their own 16. Back to work, Tylen Morton. 6'4", 215 pound, native of Griffin, California, or Georgia. And on the first play, they sweep left in with Troy Henderson, gets out of an ankle tackle and is shoved out of bounds into the Bison bench. If the play stands, it is a gain of six to the 22, but a flag came in towards the end of the play. No containment by the right defensive end of the Bison. That's why the ball carrier got out. Number 23, offense, 10-yard penalty. Cameron Harrison, who has Southwestern's only touchdown reception of the night, was the one called for the hold. So that wipes away a good gain on first down, and now the ball will go back to the 10-yard line for Southwestern. It'll bring up first down and 16 with 13.08 to play here in the first half. Quick throw out right, ball caught in the backfield. That's Troy Henderson. Henderson outside the numbers, and then he's banged out of bounds by Chase White Bear, who's coming off his best game in his first season at the collegiate level last week at Alva. Knocks him out of bounds after a gain of five. Good job by the Oklahoma Baptist D, stringing that play out, running toward the right side. 12-44, Kennedy to play before halftime. Anna Howe, women's volleyball coach, joins us at halftime. Back to throw Morton, throws out right. Ball is caught, but the receiver, Deshaun Moreau, had to come back and was well short of the first down marker. The play will go for six, again to the 21, so it's third down and five. Nick Boone earlier got a sack on Morton. At that time, Morton, he was standing there for days, just made it easy for him to complete that pass on the right boundary. Deshaun Moreau, who had that catch for six, to set up third and five of the 21 for Swasu, is one of three receivers to the near side. Look for 23s this way as well. That's Harrison. Looked like Southwestern fired prematurely with the receivers. They hand it off, and that is a first down carry by Gerald Palmer. Elijah Tomlin's been doing such a good job being the point of attack. At that time, he missed the running back in the backfield. Palmer with three carries, 18 yards to lead all Bulldog ground gators in the first quarter. They hand it again to Palmer, running behind right guard, stays low to the ground and manages three to the 34-yard line. Both of these offensive coordinators are going click, click, click. I mean, they're up and ready to snap the football. Yeah, all about rhythmics, and it makes a big difference in all sports, momentum. Would you spell that word after this play, Rhythmatics? 11.26 <laughs> to play, first half. Back to throw again as Morton over the middle. Ball caught. Israel Watson makes the reception at the 47-yard line. So that'll be another Southwestern first down. If Morton has time to survey the field, it is big-time trouble tonight. Yeah, but that time K.J. Price was right behind Israel. All you have to do is jump around, maybe deflect that pass. First and 10, handoff again to Henderson. Dives to the 49-yard line. Ran right into K.J. Price Jr. that time. So second down upcoming. Well, also with Southwestern's doing a good job of mixing up the run and the pass. 
So this is probably going to be a pass here after that. They're using the run to set up those long passes. Two receivers left and right. Palmer is back out there as the single setback. Ball with the left hash from Southwestern's own 49-yard line. 10-10 game, still early in the second quarter. Three-man front, handoff to Palmer, picks his way inside OBU territory, and then is flipped backwards, head over heels at the 47-yard line, a gain of four. So it's third down and manageable again. Peter Papula, one of the Bison in on the tackle. Oklahoma Baptist doing a good job at the line of scrimmage. Good job by the running back, kind of picking his way through and falling forward. Already ready to snap at Tylen Morton. Palmer, who picked up a first down early on a run on third down, gets the call again. Gerald running behind right guard, trying to get to the 45, and that's all he gets. He needed to get to the 43, so let's see if Josh Kirkman keeps the pedal on the metal and goes for it in a very quick snap. Nick Boone and Lebeshack on the tackle. Fourth down and two. Bulldogs will go for it at the 45-yard line. Troy Henderson now moves to the left of the quarterback, Tyler Morton. They need to get to the 43. OBU with the three-man defensive front, showing some pressure. And now Southwestern checks out of the play. 12 seconds to snap it. Under 10 minutes to play first half. They hand it off to Henderson, and he kept low to the ground, kept his legs moving. And second effort, one dog got him to the first down at the 43. Yeah, the Bison looked like they stood their ground, and like as you mentioned, the second effort, a little bit of push, right into Torreon Smith, who we hadn't seen Smith, a big body there on the line the last couple weeks due to cramp, body cramps. Both Jensen and Kirkwood not afraid to go for it. Both coming in and attempted 10 fourth down tries. Southwestern and OBU both 5 of 10. Tonight the dogs are 2 of 2. Morton to throw, pocket holes, throws left, ball is caught, and making a sliding catch was Hairston, but he had his knee on the ground at the 20 or 34 yard line, so it's going to go for a gain of nine. Good throw by Tylen Morton. He's, you got to have a strong arm for that long pass all the way to the sideline. 8.51 to play here in the first half, a 10 10 tie, but Southwestern is threatening. Ladder on the backfield, Henderson gets out of one with the tackler that is buried. Boy, he was hit hard on the second effort. And the play will lose to the 38, so it's minus four. That was Chase White Bear with the hard hit. Brandon Spencer was the initial uh, would-be tackler for the Bison that tripped up the ball. Carrier. You know, it has been really fun to watch Chase White Bear develop in just three and a half games at the collegiate level. Third down at five, Swasu at the OBU 38. Morton under pressure, retreating, dumps it out right. Ball is caught behind the line. Henderson, he has a first down as he's across inside the 35 and the 30. And there is a flag back down behind the play, so that would more than likely indicate an infraction up coming against Southwestern. On the offense, number 50, the 10-yard penalty. Isaac five. Foster called for the holds. He is a true freshman from Jones, just outside the OKC metro area. He had a great football career. Longhorns are a small school power here in the state of Oklahoma. Instead of a first down in the 30, it's now third down and 12. And the line of scrimmage is back at the 41-yard line. Tylen Morton gets the snap. Now he drops. Here comes the pressure. He'll roll right. Morton still looking downfield. Running out of time. No, but you has it. He was hit first by Nick Carpet, who also is one of the youngster that's approving leaps and bounds week to week. And there's some jawing again in front of the Southwestern bench between the two teams, involving one of which Nick Carpet. And Elijah Tomlin uh, on the tackle. Nick Carpet was the initial guy. He's the left defensive end in just the three-man rush. I was concerned that Oklahoma Baptist wouldn't get there with just the three-man rush, but Carpet got loose to flush the quarterback outright. Fourth down and 11 at the 45 of Oklahoma Baptist. And they are going to bring Jerry Van Winkle in and try to flip the field position. Van Winkle this season has put five of his punts inside the 20, and before he gets the snap, we'll get a flag. So the game has kind of grinded to a little bit of a heart, uh, halt here, Scott, in the second quarter because of penalties. Yeah, but they're, they're all on the Bulldogs pretty much yep. so. So that's a good sign for the gray yeah, and green. The way of game against Swasu. So the line of scrimmage back at the 50. Southwestern comes into the ball game with 30 penalties, second most of the conference. Their 87 yards of penalty yardage are the third most in the league. 
So it's fourth and 16. Jared Van Winkle punts now back at his own 35. Low snap, not much pressure. Van Winkle with an end over end kick, and Harris is set to return for the 11 of the 15. Jitterbugs to the 20, key across the 25, and down to the 26 yard line. Well, that is a dangerous punt, Scott. A line drive punt to Keelan Harris. Yeah, I thought Harris, with his burning speed, was going to come out around the right end. I think he could outran those guys. But he, he decided to jitterbug up, and it's still a good punt return, uh, double-digit punt return up to the 26. 7 7 to play here in the first half, a 10-10 tie, and we'll take a timeout for the OBU College of Graduate and Professional Studies. This is Bison Football on the OBU Radio Network. Noble McIntyre, and I'm a tri lawyer. But that was not my original plan. I went to Oklahoma Baptist University, and law school wasn't even on my radar. And then one day it was. Why? Sometimes those with more power than others abuse that power. Instead of doing the right thing because it's the right thing, they do the wrong thing because it's profitable. An innocent victim is victimized again. They feel helpless and voiceless against the multi billion dollar insurance company. I saw it happen. I watched a family member suffer as the system left them feeling helpless and voiceless. I am not helpless, and I do have a voice. And for my clients, when the fight comes, the insurance company pulling strings in the shadows doesn't face a powerless victim. They face me. For way too long... And 10, E.J. Moore is in the backfield. Dayton Wolf is the quarterback at the 20. Good snap back. Hand off to EJ. EJ finds some daylight and separates down at the 31. A nice five yard gain for Oklahoma Baptist on first down. Yeah, Moore was looking to run left, got pushed back to the right, almost off balance to the turf, kept his balance for four and a half yards. 648 and counting to play before halftime, a 10 10 tie. Wolf throws it in the backfield and a little pass, swing pass for Moore, trying to stiff arm a couple of defenders. EJ spins and somehow manages to get a couple of the 33, making it up third down and short. Oklahoma Baptist has converted just one of five third down tries here in the first half. Yeah, Moore with two and a half yards on that horizontal screen pass toward the left sideline. Good job by the Bulldogs to stretch that play out. Josiah Drain is lined up tight in left, tight in right, sharp, wide receivers both ways. Harris is in the slot to the near side. Now Dayton Wolf is checking out of the play as it's called from upstairs and defensive coordinator or offensive coordinator Daniel Eaton. One back set. Moore will, or Wolf will snap it. He hands it to Moore, and Moore has nowhere to go. He ran right into the teeth of the defense. He'll be dropped for a yard loss to the 32. And now it is fourth down and short with 5.40 to play here in the first half. Chris Jensen will do as the guard says and put them all away. Linebacker Rich Silva ran up from the linebacking level right into the hole to stuff that play. Well, that was a disappointing offensive series. You end up netting five or six yards, but you picked up five on the first down carry. Here's Phipps, who's had a nice night punting. Braden two for an average of 47 and a half. Rugby style kicks this one. It's an end over end kick. It's at the 38, rolls laterally to the 35, and then it's down to the 36 yard line. 32 yards for Braden Phipps. No return. Southwestern has it in a 10-10 tie with 5.16 to play here in the first half. And again, the second quarter brought to you by the OBU College of Graduate and Professional Studies. Yeah, Bison wearing gray, gray pants, gray jerseys. Normally that's a color that Southwestern University uses all the time to mix in with their blue, but they're just straight up uh, navy blue pants and white. Yep, good looking road uniforms for Swasso. Trying to end the four-year losing streak to Oklahoma Baptist in Great American Conference play. Swasu takes over at their own 36-yard line. They split the backs to each side of Tylen Morton. The give straight ahead to Henderson with running room, a first down and more across the 45 to the 47. 11 yards going right behind J.D. Aramillo, the center. Troy Henderson with the delayed handoff. 
found some running room. Matthew Norman the tackle. Take the handoff. Now swing it out right to Watson. Watson gets away from two to finish down the sideline. He goes inside the OBU 40 and is tackled at the 36 yard line. Bison had two defenders. Caleb Peters and Chase White Bear right there, but they couldn't make the tackle. Yeah, White Bear had his hands on a first at the line of scrimmage. Just too high of a tackle. To the 37th game. They go back to the ground game with Gerald Palmer. Palmer picks up a half yard, maybe a full yard, close to the 35. So it's going to bring up second down for the Dogs with 418 to play here in the first half. Southwestern, that's a bunch of running plays up the middle or off the right side. This is should be a play-action pass. Anna Howe, who's volleyball team on their 10th of the season and won their Fourth straight in conference play today over Northwestern. Three nothing joins us at halftime. Big hole for Henderson up the gut on first down. Her second down, it is inside the red zone of the 19. A gain of 17 at Southwestern now winning the battle up front. Well, you don't have to pass if you get big chunks like that. It looked like Tylen Morton was going to do play action, but at the last second, stuck it in the belly of the back. Henderson gets another handoff straight ahead. Same play, this time on the right side. And he manages five to the 14 of OBU. I wouldn't mind seeing a timeout right now to kind of uh, slow things down a little bit. Something, because right now Swasu is in terrific rhythm offensively, thanks to Troy Henderson. 3.16 to play here in the first half. Again, they hand it off. This time it's Palmer at the five, steps over a defender, stumbles, and did he get into the end zone? No, he did not. They spot him down inside the three-yard line. I think Southwestern's going to run every time with a three-man front. Second, or first and goal to go. Hand off again and in for the touchdown. It's like men against boys right there on that drive. Yeah, Morton from Southern Alabama transferred. Didn't, never, didn't have to put it in the air except for that little screen pass. What an offensive series. Gerald Palmer caps it on a two-yard run. Jared Van Winkle will be on for the extra point. Southwestern said enough of this, and they just went right after OBU. Van Winkle to make it a 17-10 Bulldogs lead. Low snap, ball down, kick is on the way, and Van Winkle tacks on the 17th point of the night for Southwestern. 3.02 to play here in the first half, 17-10. Bulldogs will pause for these local messages on the Bison Radio Network. Goes to Harris at the 10 and off he goes. Down the boundary to the 20, 30, 40 to midfield and Southwestern finally knocks him out of bounds after a 40 yard return. Well here come the Bison hoping to answer back with 2.54 to play in the first half. 17 to 10, Southwestern, one dog will visit with Gabe Elisario and Daniel Eaton for the field at halftime. Anna Al joins us here in the booth as well, the OBU volleyball coach. Three nothing winners today over Northwestern here at home. Single setback, Anderson. Wolf drops, throws out right. Phipps with a catch, and he is drilled right in the sternum by Darius Franklin as the catch goes to the 44 of Southwestern, a gate of six. Bison quickly get up. 
2.35 to play. Southwestern with four defenders up front. Wolf throws it a little first down catch. Harris trying to dodge defenders. He came back from behind the marker, but submarines down the 40 right at the first down step. He <laughs> took a little bit of chance on that button hook because he had the first down. He said step back and then was able to turn around and fall back across the first down mark. That last Southwestern drive, seven plays, never went to third down, only went to second twice. Harris motions from left to right of the formation. OBU in Southwestern territory. Wolf drops to the 49, steps up, running out of time, throws on the run, it's off target, but Phipps makes the diving catch at the 30 yard line. Southwestern is saying that he trapped the ball. The official right there said it is a catch. Gain of 10, break with two catches for 16 yards in this drive. Bison threatening the red zone. They're at the Southwestern 30 yard line. Four receivers, including trips wide left with Nate Anderson to the backfield. Back to throw as Wolf throws it out right flat. Anderson with blockers. He's to the 20 to the 15, and Nate Anderson is out of bounds inside or right at the 10 yard line, a 20 yard pass, a little swing play to Nate Anderson. Hey, Marshall and Keelan, he, they both took the safety and the corner back out of there. There was a big gap, plenty of running room after the catch. Everything working perfect, now a timeout. Timeout on the field with 1.33 to play here in the first half. In Anna Howell at halftime, Brooks, he was scores from around the conference, including a look at that big matchup, number seven, Harding at number nine, Washita tonight. That game is just kicking off now. They kicked off at seven o'clock at Cliff Harris Stadium in Arkadelphia. Everything else started at six in the league. John will also have a statistical recap of the first half and Scott with coordinator interviews. So a full pack show coming up for you at halftime. As always brought to you by McIntyre Law. Bison are in the red zone. Oklahoma Baptist tonight in the red zone is two for two, a touchdown and a field goal. Their touchdown was a pass. That means it is now 31 consecutive games. The Bison have thrown for at least one touchdown. Bazell is in the backfield. They fake the handoff, throw a slant. It's incomplete. There's a lot of grabbing to the jersey. That time with DeAndre Scott and the intended target for Oklahoma Baptist. So it's second down and 10 from the Southwestern 10. Yep, they did. It was a late flag, but that's the correct call. Pass interference against DeAndre Scott, so it'll bring up first and goal to go at the Southwestern five yard line. One twenty-eight to play before halftime. Buddy Bazell with a pistol formation with Dayton Wolf. Wolf has Harris to the near side. Another receiver. Receiver split wide left. Landsteiner snaps the ball and OBU is a little bit confused and they're going to have to burn a time out. Oklahoma Baptist. Play clock was down to one second. That's when the scream came from the sideline. Well, I thought that they were going to go ahead and snap it, but there was a lot of almost looked like jumping jacks going on to the Bison sideline yeah. trying to get the attention of Dayton Wolf. And then it looked like they might snap it with one second, but that's when the timeout called to preserve the penalty. So OBU will have it first and goal to go. Don't forget shopobubisa.com, the official home of OBU Athletics. Open 365 days a year, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Shopobubison.com. Next week, it's the Battle of the Bison and the Bisons. Will Harding be riding high off a win over a top 10 opponent, or will they be coming off their first loss? That'll be a two o'clock kickoff from First Security Stadium in Searcy. OBU and Harding, 1.30 Network pregame show. And speaking of kicking off, they have just kicked off right now at Washita. It's the late game on the card. The fullback in now is Chance Brookshire. Rolling right. On second a goal to go as Wolf, and he throws it away, looking to the back right corner for Sam Sharp, who has a touchdown catch tonight, and he was double covered. Well, that play had no chance. 
Tell you what, that, that defensive backfield of Southwestern has really done a good job tonight. Yeah. Not been a lot of guys running wide open down the field. Josh Kirkland last year was five and six at New Mexico Highlands. Takes over at Southwestern and this team plays hard. That's one of the things oh. the OBU coach has pointed out this week. Totally different looking team than we've seen from Southwestern in the last three or four right. years. Bazell in the backfield on second and goal to go. Hand off to the Carl Albert freshman picking his way. Inside the two down to the one yard line with 112 to play here in the first half. It's going to be third down and goal to go. And now comes the jumbo set in. And a timeout called by Southwestern. That's a good timeout. That's a really good timeout because you can't take them with you. And you might as well make certain you've got all the right personnel out there. And when we say third and a yard, we're not telling the truth because it's about third and about a half a yard. You're right. Let's pause for station identification. This is Oklahoma Baptist University football on the Bison Radio Network. Todd Miller, John Brooks, Scott Wattish. One dog already down on the field. We will catch Gabe Elisario, the defensive coordinator, who can't be all that displeased with the way his defensive unit has played. Southwestern started the drive at OBU's into the field of the 38. They started one at the 15 after a block hunt of Braden Phipps. And on those two drives, Southwestern managed just three points. Zach Frazier, who has the opposite of where zero or number 60, wearing number 60 tonight. Left tackle out of McKinney, Texas, North High School. It's a wildcat formation. Bazell keeps it and walks into the end zone for the touchdown. 61 seconds to play. And over an extra point away from equalizer. It's interesting. The jumbo set was to the right. You saw it, Todd. The handoff goes that way. Everybody starts to move that way. He cuts back, got a nice block from the left tackle, was able to just streak into the end zone. Buddy Bazell reaches pay dirt for the second consecutive week and the team leading third rushing touchdown of the season. Garcia, who has connected the field goal of 27 and booted through an extra point, tries to draw Oklahoma Baptist even. Russell will snap it, the junior from Collinsville. It's a high snap, Phipps gets it down, and the extra point is good. How about the job that Brayton Phipps has nice done? Job. The first extra point try, the snap was a little low. That one started to sail over Brayton's head, and he popped up, yanked it down, and then Garcia, with all the time in the world, was able to split the uprights. So 61 seconds to play in the first half, we're tied at 17, and Brooksy, does this game remind you a little bit last week of the game at Alvin, which Northwestern would try to get control and the young Bison would come back and get the game tied or grab their own momentum. We've seen that time and time again here in the first half. Yeah, we have, I, you know, these two teams, quite frankly, in looking at the first three games, I think this is the best matchup in the first three games for the Bison. I don't know, you agree or not? I think on paper it certainly is. I don't think they're, and from the way it's played out here with the first half, I don't think there's a lot of separation between these two either. So you're, you're going to say that I'm right about something finally, right? I'll give you. Yeah, I, I agree with you. <laughs> okay. Hey, you brought Joey Dogs to the booth tonight, yeah. so I'm going to agree with that, that, you. You, you I, get that win, John. I, I bought an affirmative statement with a hot dog. Okay. <laughs> it's not easy to do. That's right. Or not hard to do. Yeah. Here is Guillermo Garcia's left to right boot. And this is a good one. And this will go into the end zone. They're going to bring it out from a yard deep to the 10. That is Henderson. Circles back at the 14. Breaking tackles. Flag goes down. And Henderson is tackled just shy of the 15-yard line. Not certain that was the best decision of the world for Troy Henderson, especially if this penalty goes against Southwestern. Well, it was not a good decision at all. And uh, the thing... Thing was, he crossed the 15, probably could have gotten to the 20, then he tried to reverse his field, came out with even worse. And holding 
Ball will be at the seven yard line. Yeah, it was not a good decision, but it's a really poor decision now because with the penalty, they start inside their own 10 yard line. 54 seconds to play here in the first half. Todd looking at the board. Uh, the Bison have two timeouts left. So, I don't know, can we do the math on that? It'll be tough. Yeah. I was trying to see if they might get a chance to get the ball back on a punt from deep in the end zone. Let's see. Handoff Hand goes to Henderson. Quick Sweeping time out left. right here. Undercut as he goes back right to the 13, a gain of almost six. And there is the OBU timeout with. Nope, nope they didn't, didn't take it. 42 yep. seconds to play, so the clock is continuing to wind down. It is second down and four. Back to throw is Morton all day long. Throws out right, and the ball is caught and then tackled immediately. That's a first down reception near the 24-yard line. That's the end of the chess game. Jalen Lampley was the receiver on the end of that pass. Lawsuit quickly up to the line of scrimmage with 23 seconds to play. Ball is at the 23. They sling it out right. Ball is caught behind or right at the marker and a good tackle that time. Really good tackle by Preston Ferguson. I think that was 34, and Southwestern's going to use the timeout. That was not 34, it was 44, Elijah Tomlin. So it'll be second down and nine as that catch goes for one yard to the 23. If you're calling a timeout in a game tie with 14 seconds to go in halftime and you're at your own 19 and it's your final timeout, there isn't anybody that's ever seen a football game that doesn't know this baby is a Hail Mary coming downfield. Yep. And remember, Southwestern gets the possession to start the second yes, they half. they do. Really entertaining game tonight. Maybe you trying to win number 19 in a row against Oklahoma schools. Tell me what that is. Eight. Really remarkable. What did you say, 18 in a row? Yeah. This would be. This would be 18. Yeah, that's right. I said 19. 18. It's remarkable, especially for a young program like oh, that. Come on. Henderson's in the backfield on second down and nine. Morton gets the snap, stands tall, under pressure from Carpen, throws out right, ball is caught at the 45-yard line. Swasu cannot stop the clock. Moreau with the catch. They put it in the 43, and there's two seconds to go. Morton spikes the ball. And it's going to bring up second down and 10. Actually, I thought the clock was supposed to stop until they reset the chain anyway. It was a first down. OBU is going into a big time prevent defense. They only have three guys on the line of scrimmage. Everybody else is some 15 yards and beyond. There's officially three seconds to go here in the first half, and Morton will throw it deep. He rolls right. Now he throws on the run, and the ball is incomplete off of Burrow's fingertips at the 37 of OBU. A good defensive stand, and Oklahoma Baptist will start the second half with a 17-17 tie with the rivals from Swasu. Awaiting Scott Wanish and his visit with Gabe Elisario. I think Scotty just, uh, he just spotted him. Yeah. Let's go downstairs to Scott. Got defensive coordinator Gabe Elisario. Hey coach, first, first quarter, you guys really stopped the run. Southwestern had no chance of really moving the ball with the ground game in the opening quarter. Yeah, you know, Scott, I think our guys were uh, just sitting in on that, but I think, you know, with the tempo that they run, the hurry up, no huddle, we just got to make sure we're getting lined up and we're still playing sound with all of our fits. But, yeah, they want to do that. They're going to hang their hat on that. That's part of their identity. One thing that the defense can hang their hat on, you had a block punt on special teams, nothing to do with the defense. Three and out, basically three and a kick, held them to just three points. Yeah, you know, Coach Jensen really – uh, make sure that we're ready for any kind of sudden change situations. And so situational football is what we have to be ready for. And that could happen at any time in this game. You guys know that. And so we just got to make sure that in those transitions we're, we're antennas up in those situations. Thanks, Coach. Thanks so much. Good job, one dog. Halftime, 17-17, our tie between OBU and Southwestern. Stay tuned. The McIntyre Law Halftime Report is next on the Bison Radio Network.
Western at home. Footballers trying to make it three for three for OBU Athletics. Garcia to kick it away from left to right. Run right away in the final two periods from Shawnee and another touchback for Guillermo Garcia. I know they were really, really high on him, Scott, when they signed him a couple of years ago, but just week to week, you see his leg strength continue to get much stronger and certainly his accuracy really improving. Well, that shows you that there's no wind, of course, going into the south side. That's twice that Garcia has stuck that in to the south end zone and then once outside of the north end zone. All right, here we go. Tyler Morton and company will trot the offense on for the first time. Southwestern averaging 300 pounds tackle to tackle that offensive front. Bison have been variable up front, multiple if you will, between three and four man fronts. Single setback, Troy Henderson to start the second half. They hand it off to Henderson, he runs right. Henderson, not much running room, is stretched out and he's gonna pick up a couple of yards to the 27 yard line. Henderson ran right into Nick Carpen. Carpen just pulled Henderson down to the ground. Nick Carpen has a chance to be an absolute monster over the final couple of years of his career here on Bison Hill. Second down and eight. They keep it on the ground. They hand it to Henderson again, and Henderson runs right into three Bison defenders, and a flag comes in. At the end of the play, Xavier Lott, 49, the rush in out there was the one that first made contact. Now let's hear from Ken Rohn. With a personal foul, number 49, defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. Boy, that's a killer. Lott, who made the tackle, also grabbed his face mask. It's 15 yards. So instead of being a loss on the play, Southwestern gets a Free set of downs via the penalty of the ball moves to the 42. Two backs in the backfield. Handoff goes to Palmer, running right, trying to get to the edge. Does, boy, he's a physical runner. Made contact with the defender and then is tackled to the 49-yard line. A hard fought seven yards on first down. And not only is he strong, powerful, he's a juker. He juked K.J. Price there at right end. Put K.J. Price on the turf. Third quarter brought to you by Noble McIntyre. Back entire loss. Second and short. Hand off to Henderson straight ahead. Good change of pace back. He spins at the 47. Keeps dragging the pile. And finally will not go down at the 44-yard line where they blow the play dead. So another first down for Southwestern. who has really come out running the football well. They outgained Oklahoma Baptist 93 to 15 on the ground of the first half. Yeah, the last two were big gainers for the dogs, but the initial two were stopped uh, by Carpen and Lott, but Lott got caught face mask. 13-35 to play. They fake the handoff, throw it out left. Watson is sixth target of the ball game. It's sixth catch and doesn't get much. Out of bounds into the Bison sideline to catch and run a four to the 40. Good job by Matthew Norman, full speed. He had the slot receiver. He read that screen and got out really fast. 13-10 to play here in the third quarter. We're tied at 17. Neither team has had bigger than a four-point lead, or make that a seven-point lead in the first half. Fake handoff again. They'll throw it out wide right, and the catch is made by Moreau. Somehow he dances with the defender and then dives down after he was able to shake free of him and gets the first down to the 34. Somebody on the Bisons has got to get in the backfield, some kind of penetration, but sometimes that's hard to do with just three-man front. This offensive line has three freshmen, a sophomore, and a junior tackle to tackle starting tonight. Hand off to Palmer running right. Palmer at the 30, denying contact as he gets two more to the 28-yard line. That's another gain of six for Southwestern on first down. Well, the Bison in a three-man front, there's no penetration, so the running back just sidesteps and then plows forward. Drive two and a half minutes old. They've moved from their own 25 to the OBU 28. This time they're gonna take a shot. Morton throws it wide right, and the pass too high intended for Moreau, and it will bring up third down and six at the 28. And Scott, you said this, they are rolling OBU in the backfield to sleep, and they're gonna take a shot here anytime. Yep, and Deshaun Moreau was wide open on the out pattern. Uh, about four yards away from the Bison defender. A lot of time to throw, but just a poor pass. 15 of 19 passing now for Tylen Morton, the transfer from South Alabama. Third down, hand off to Palmer, running left, gets out of a jersey tackle, first down out of the 18 of Oklahoma Baptist. And he was dumped up truck down that time by Brandon Spencer. 
Well, Josh Kirkland, head coach for the Bulldogs, looks like he just want to keep on running until the Bison stop him. Officially at the 19, they hand it to Palmer again. Palmer runs into Nick Boone, who then has a ton of help, and a flag comes in again at the end of the play. They'll give him forward progress, which would be close to the 17, but let's pump the brakes right here. Already OBU has a face pass penalty for 15 on this drive. Is that a sideline warning? I think it was a sideline warning against OBU. No, it's a penalty. They're moving the ball toward the goal line. Yeah, they are. I didn't hear I it. I thought it was a personal foul. Okay, I just saw him act like it was yeah. a sideline. No, warning. I think it was a personal foul. Uh, his microphone went off, so we had no idea. All right, first and goal to go. Southwester, the ball inside the 10. Hand off, short left. Henderson, he's in trouble. Carpenter has him. K.J. Price was there. Also in on the stop was Matthew Norman. And Torion. Smith was there as well. So it is second down and goal to go at the 12. Hand off again to Henderson and nowhere to go. Nick Boone, Nick Carpen were there. And Lebeshack was the one that initially got him by the jersey. That's a nice comeback from that unsportsmanlike conduct call two plays ago. First and goal to go at the 9, the third and goal to go at the 13. Morton throws a screen pass. Now they're going to try a double pass as Israel Watson that has the ball poked free of him. And then Watson dives onto the 15-yard line. What terrific coverage downfield because they lateraled the ball to Israel Watson looking for a double pass downfield and nobody was there. And it was nearly a turnover. So OBU's defense stiffens and it's going to be a field goal attempt of 30 yards for Van Winkle. That's twice. I know that this time the Bison gave up the long drive, but they really stiffened the inside the red zone to force field goals two times in this game. OBU coming in ninth in the Great American Conference, six trips into the red zone by the opposition, five scores and three of those or five touchdowns. Here's Van Winkle from the 30 or from the uh, 30 yards. The kick is all the way and it is good. Kid's a weapon and he's young. Timeout, 10.48 to play third quarter. That's a win, in my opinion, for Oklahoma Baptist. Southwestern 20, OBU 17. The third quarter brought to you by McIntyre Law on the OBU radio network. OBU fans, do you want the chance to support OBU student athletes from the convenience of your own mobile device? Text hashtag BAA at OBU to the number 52014 to support BAA student athletes. Donations are fully tax deductible, and every gift makes a difference in the OBU student athlete's life. Again, text hashtag BAA at OBU to the number 52014. For more information, log on to OBUBison.com. I'm Noble McIntyre. When I started the McIntyre Law Firm, I knew I didn't want to be a firm with a reputation that settled as quickly as possible with as little effort as possible. I didn't want the defense lawyers and insurance companies to see my name on the list of firms that will always settle and never want to fight for the full value of a client's claim. A firm that avoids the courtroom in exchange for an easy settlement will never be offered full value. If you need some Bulldogs into the red zone for the third time tonight. They've a touchdown and two field goal attempts. They now have scored 13 times in the red, or make that 17 times in the red zone, but six of those this year have been held to three points. Van Winkle now is going to kick the football off, and it'll be a three-yard approach. He swings his legs, and this one hangs up. It's going to be Braden Phipps at the 19 to the 20-25. Phipps trying to get to the corner to the 30 in trouble. Breaks two to the tacklers, and then is stood up and slung out of bounds. Good play on special teams by, I believe that was Gerald Palmer. Was that 34 down there? Yep, it was. Yeah, Ke Keelan Harris was trying everything he could to get in front of Braden Phipps to be the lead guy since that kickoff was short. But Harris came up quickly. I think if Phipps saw Harris coming, he might have let the electrifying Harris grab that. OBU has had an answer on almost every score tonight for Southwester. They trail 20 to 17. First offensive possession of the third quarter starts at the 35. Two receivers left and right with a single running back in the backfield. That is Buddy Bazell. Back to throw is Wolf, and he is buried. Holy cow, Reese Wilhite, the sophomore 
four defensive lineman from Cordell, Oklahoma, hit him from the blind side. I think Date never saw it coming. Yeah, it was a pretty good pocket. I think he got over three seconds again. The Wolf was just looking right, looking right. Give it up to the Bulldogs secondary. Loss of seven back to the 27-yard line. Second down and long. Three receivers wide left. One to the slot to the near side. Wolf to throw. Guns it over the middle and nobody's home. Harris was close to Julian Clark. One of those two had to be the intended target. But again, the ball was about eight yards over either one of them's head. Looked like that was supposed to be a crossing pattern where they could have got a pick with Mike Marshall and Keelan Harris crossing, trying to rub off the defender on each other, but the ball was high. OBU with two big penalties on that drive and a flag as the football was snapped and they threw it out right. Well, there, 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 that, was a, that was a total miscommunication right there. You had the receiver coming down the near sideline. He was supposed to stop and turn. That ball was thrown behind him. Well, Keelan is not happy at all. That's going to be the third penalty now for 35 yards for OBU in this second half. Here is Ken Roan. They're actually going to decline the penalty, and it will bring up fourth down and 17 to the 27-yard line. OBU has been penalized the fewest amount of times at the conference for, through three weeks, 12 for an average of 43 per game. Tonight they've had three 15-yard penalties in this ball game. They trail 20 to 17 with 10 minutes to play in the third quarter. Here is Phipps, runs right, gets a leg into it, a dandy of a pot to the near side. It's gonna hit at the 15 and it rolls out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. Wow. Look at Braden Phipps punt, walking a tightrope and taking one 10 yard bounce and a right turn, 67 yards on the punt. That's the best punt I have ever seen Braden Phipps do. And he kind of shortens up his steps, like you mentioned earlier, Todd. Instead of taking that rugby style, maybe one or two steps and then just boom that ball straight up high. Ball is down at the eight yard line that is two yards shy of the school record set by cooper coons against another southwestern team southwestern assemblies of god back on october the 12th of 2013. so a record that has stood almost the entire duration of the reboot of this program nearly went down with that right-footed boot from Braden Phipps. There's a timeout of the field, 20 to 17, Southwestern the score, back after these messages on the Bison Radio Network. Here at SCI Supply, you truly can purchase with purpose. Whether you're a university, a K through 12 school, a local nonprofit, a church, or an individual, we have exactly what you're looking for. And 100% of the profit from your purchase stays here to fulfill the mission of providing vocational training, employment opportunities, and residential care to individuals with special need. So remember, how does your purchase make a purpose? By investing in South Central, the official office supply store of OBU Athletics. OBU Athletics and First United Bank are now excited to announce that First United Bank is the official banking partner of OBU Athletics. Visit their North Harrison Street location today and ask about how you can make a statement with the OBU debit card. play on special teams. The kicking game is crucial. It's playing a, a big part in this game. First and 10, handed off over right guard, Troy Henderson, the redshirt junior from Franklin, Tennessee. And the gain is five out to the 12 yard line. Yeah, field goal kickers are perfect on field goals and extra points. A Southwestern blocked a punt to get a field goal. Actually, my math is bad. A gain of four to the 12 yard line. And that flags again. Southwestern is starting to retreat. It is a false start against the Bulldogs. So OBU's defense needs to hold right here and give the offense a really good starting field position after that punt by Braden Phipps of 65 yards. So the line of scrimmage back inside the 10, back to throw as Morton throws it out right. Ball is caught at the 10, down the numbers to the 15 and out of bounds. 
Matthew Norman forced the receiver out of bounds. Good penetration by Torreon Smith. I think that was Jalen Lampley, number eight, that made the catch. The game goes to the 13. So it's going to bring up third down and about five. A terrific crowd, incidentally, here on hand tonight for Hall of Fame weekend on Bison Hill. I mean, a terrific crowd. Both sides of the stadium. A lot of spectators. Play action pass. Morton under pressure. Throws on the run. Looking for Lampley. The ball's under thrown and nearly intercepted. Chase White there got inside position. And Morton got by with one as that ball was underthrown and hung up. Yeah, White Bear was behind at first. If that ball wasn't underthrown, that could have been a TD. But great job by White Bear staying with it outside the numbers on the right sideline to break that pass up. He is a good-looking player. If you've ever seen him up close, Chase White Bear, a six foot three, has just terrific size for the quarterback spot. Fourth and five of the 13, so that means punt time for Van Winkle. He stands at the goal line of the south end here of Crane Family Stadium at the Hurt Athletic Complex. Snap back, kick is in the air. It's a good one. Harris will wait for it. He'll catch it to the 45. Circles right. Stiff arms the tackler. Gets a block to midfield. Now the battery to the 45. And he angles out of bounds into the OBU bench at the 43-yard line. That might have been just a 12-yard return, but I'm telling you, that is outstanding. That's a high punt. Keelan Harris has no blockers. That ball comes down with a high punt right in his face, and Keelan Harris outruns that initial tackle. 40-yard punt, 12 yards on the return, 8-11 to play here in the third quarter, 20-17 to Southwestern and immediately. Chris Jensen and Daniel Eaton have that offense already back out there on the field. This game has been really rapidly played. I mean, they're not this officiating crews moving along, and both teams' offense has been clicking as well. They'll empty the backfield. E.J. Moore in motion to the far side. Throw over the middle. That's Harris with the catch. At the 38, he falls forward to the 37 for a gain of six. Yeah, Southwestern being cautious with Keelan Harris, so they're playing, giving a cushion. Uh, that pass right there, that little stop. Pattern, six yards, seven yards, going to be there all day. Harris comes off the field without his headgear. He is kind of dabbing at his head. Clock stops briefly with 8.01 to play. Now it starts to move on second and four. Throw out left for Moore. Moore, or excuse me, that's not Moore, but instead that is uh, Thomas Meadow, 89. His catch does very little a yard gain to the 36, so it's third down and three. Yeah, the Bison have had very little success with those patterns that are horizontal straight to the side. More than likely, this is two down territory for Oklahoma Baptist. They're at the Southwestern 36, need to get to the 35, or the 33. Moore gets the snap, he'll drop, throws out left, and the ball is incomplete. He was looking for Michael Marshall, and that was almost timed a little early by Deion. DeAndre Scott. Uh, DeAndre Scott almost was going to the house the other way. He jumped that route, and somehow he couldn't catch the interception. He did jump the route, but he almost got there a little too quick. Yeah, I just think he just missed the football, like through his hands. OBU will go for it. First time tonight, Oklahoma Baptist has gone for it on fourth down. We told you that the Bison and the Bulldogs had both five of ten on fourth down tries this season coming in. Well, this is huge right here. One back set of the backfield. Southwestern showing pressure. Wolf retreats. Now he's going to try to run. He be sacked at the 40-yard line. I give it up to the Southwestern defense. That's tough. I think if Wolf went just a little bit earlier, he had that seam going to the left side. But when you hesitate, those gaps close. Yep. And if he doesn't hesitate, he's going to he's going to he's going to pick it up on the run. But he what he did again. That coverage is so good, but he looked one more time just in case somebody had shaken it. Nobody had shaken the coverage. 7-16 to go in the third quarter. Southwestern preserves a three-point lead. And a, a drive that started at the Bulldog 43 with that last sack on fourth and short. Nets just two yards. What a disappointing, disappointing first possession of the second half. Like that the second possession. Hand off to Henderson. He's hit, spins, and Henderson will get two to the 43-yard line. Nick Boone was one of the by set up off the pile. Xavier Lott, the first man there. Already halfway through the third period. Now less than seven minutes to play in the third. 20 to 17, Oklahoma Baptist looking for their 18th consecutive win. A remarkable streak in Division II football against their in-state opponents. And what would be their fifth straight against Swasu. Henderson to the backfield. Morton claps his hands, hands it again to Troy. Troy hit and gets a yard to the 44. And 
Who was it? Elijah. Tomlin. Elijah Tomlin has had another nice game today. Boy, Tomlin was waiting, had his arms wide open like a big trap, and then just closed them like a scissors around the legs. Seven, nine, or six, nineteen to play third quarter. This is a big one. Third down at seven. Swasu at their own forty-four yard line. And as they snap the football, we get flags. I think somebody moved up front for Southwestern. They did. Wide receiver, far boundary. Yep, Flinch just ahead of the snap from Jaden Jaramillo. And that will make it fourth down and 12 back at the 39-yard line. Southwestern in the first half penalized seven times for 49 yards. They're one of the most penalized teams in the league this season. So third and 12. Play action pass. Morton stands tall. Throws over the middle. The ball is incomplete. It hit the hands that time of the tight end. That is Jacob Parsak. And three bison hit him just as the ball hit his paws and dislodged it. And now the Richard sophomore tight end from Derby, Kansas is down. Yeah, Matthew Norman, I think he had the biggest brunt hit on that tight end to lay him out. 5.59 to play here in the third quarter, and they attend to Jacob Karsak, who has been a favorite target of Tylen Morton. We told you that he had touchdown receptions as a tight end in each of the last two games against Southern Arkansas and Southeastern. That's his first target tonight. He was looking for his eighth catch. Go ahead, Brooksy. All right, let's go to the Great American Conference scoreboard. Four minutes to go in the third. Monticello with a 21 to 14 lead at home over Arkansas Tech. East Central 17, Northwestern State three. That game in Ada, five and a half to play in the third. Uh, Southern Nazarene, Southeastern State, what a battle there. 27-24, the Tigers, five and a half to go in the third. Get you an ID after this play. OBU will take over, uh, will get the uh, punt from Van Rink Winkle, who's back at the 25 yard line. Here come the Bison. Van Winkle gets a right foot into it. It's a beautiful putt. Kicked it away from Keelan. It hits at the 10, turns over to the 5, and goes out of bounds. Folks, that's what a coffin quarter kick looks like. All the way down to the 7 yard line so OBU has not had particularly great starting field position sometimes tonight has their worst to start this drive down three well the kicking game is so key in this contest Van Winkle outstanding punt not only does Van Winkle kick it away from Harris he kicks it into the seven yard line out of bounds 550 to play OBU scrimmages at their own seven after a 54 yard punt the OU station identification. We'll get it here in just a moment. Both teams already out on the field. Bison looking for their 15th win all time in football against Southwestern Oklahoma State, a series that was played regularly before the Bison shed the program early in the 1900s. Dayton Wolf. Stands at the one yard line, gets the snap back, fakes the handoff, throws it out over the middle of the pass, incomplete. He was looking for Michael Marshall. Marshall had inside position on Scott that time, but he couldn't make connection. Let's pause for station identification on the OBU Football Radio Network. Second down and 10, Wolf inside handoff, and that goes to E.J. Moore, slips an ankle tackle, and look at Moore all the way out to the 14-yard line, a gain of eight, so it's going to bring up third down and manageable. And guys, if for no other reason, you hope to pick up a couple of first downs to have a chance to flip the field. You think E.J. Moore's got confidence after that 56-yard TD run last week? Third down and a long two. Fake handoff. They throw out over the middle, and Keelan Harris was covered. I don't know how you can't throw a flag. Ashton Hamdy pulled the jersey pulled of it. Keelan Harris about three times, yep. and Harris couldn't catch up to the football. That's a terrible no call by Ken Ronan and his staff. I like the play call. Third and uh, three. It's a great call. Eden, one on one. Harris is getting gets behind uh, Ashton Hamdy, the defensive back, and uh, he got an All American receiver. It was a great call, except on uh, the striped shirt side. Here's Phipps to punt, runs right, and not his uh, best punt. He shanked it to the near side. It's going to go out of bounds. Oh, boy. Followed up a 65-yarder with that one. 
and it will be just a 26-yard punt, and Southwestern will start at the 40. First of all, if you're beaten, go ahead and grab the jersey. It's only a 15-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. In Hamby's case, it was a terrific decision because he got by with it. If he doesn't grab him, Keelan goes the distance for the score. Now, I like how Wolf saw that matchup one-on-one. -on -one. As John mentioned, All-American wide receiver. Ashton Hamby's just a freshman. That's a perfect matchup. 5-11 to play in the third quarter. Well, this is a big defensive series here. Fake hand off, they throw it out right. Watson with the catch, breaking tackles, and is inside the 35, close to the 34-yard line. A gain of almost six. Let's finish up that uh, scoreboard from earlier. Uh, two more updates, eight minutes to go in the third. Southern Arkansas 21 to 16 over Henderson. Washita 14 to 13 over Harding, five to play in the second. Here there's 444 to play in the third, 20 to 17 Southwestern. Handoff again goes to Palmer, rumbling right, breaking tackles inside the 25 yard line, put the ball on the turf, and it bounced straight back up to him. And he is finally tackled at the 19 yard line. So the run and the fumble, that's a 15 yard gain for the Bulldogs. Yeah, Gerald Palmer picked his way, got a good seal block around right in. Caleb Peters from behind. Punches the pigskin out, but fortunately for the dogs, the ball went out of bounds. Now they're going to spot it back at the 21, so it's a 13-yard gain. Palmer again into the teeth of the defense. Doesn't want to go down and manages two to the 19. Second down to Southwestern, leading by three. Works on the third quarter clock with 4.05 to play in the third. The Bison doing a good job once again getting into the red zone. They, they converge in the middle to plug those holes. Split backs, quick throw out left, and the ball is dropped incomplete by Cameron Harrison. That ball was right on target, and I'm not certain, guys, if he doesn't hold on to that, he walks in from 10 yards. Hey, let's go back a minute, Todd. You got Gerald Palmer. You've been calling his name all night long. On the two deep, he wasn't even listed. He's a redshirt freshman. They found something. They didn't and put him on the two deep, but the way he's playing, I think they knew he was going to play tonight. Dexter Brown was listed as their starter. I thought he carried a couple of times early. He did not. It was Troy Henderson that started tonight at tailback. So it's third down and eight at the 19. Henderson and Palmer split to each side of Morton. This is a four-point play perhaps right here. Late third quarter. Morton hands it straight ahead. That is Henderson, and he doesn't have anywhere to go. He struggles to the line of scrimmage. It's fourth down. Guys, that's a really interesting play call. But Nick Carpen slowed him down. Elijah Tomlin finished him off. Well, it was a read by the quarterback, but you know what he read? He read there was no chance, so he handed it off anyway. Nothing was going to happen positive. They'll put it down to the 26. Van Winkle already has a 30-yard field goal here in the second half. It'll be a 36-yard attempt for the junior from Pinson, Alabama. Snap back, ball down, everything is perfect. The kick by Van Winkle is on the way, and it is no good. He missed it wide right. How about Gabe Elisario's defense? Southwestern has had the betterment of field position all evening long, and they've primarily been forced to kick field goals and have very little show for it. Tell you, Jaron Van Winkle, he was upset. He's arguing with the official saying that ball was good. I was just outside the upright. He thought that was good. Overall, Van Winkle's been perfect except for that kick. That is his first field goal miss of the season. 3.20 to go in the third period. Keeps it a three-point game as OBU brings the offense back out there. 20 to 17, Swasu. OBU trying to level the record at two and two before going to Hardy next week for a two o'clock matchup with the Bisons. Handoff to Moore, or excuse me, that's Anderson. Look at Nate, the former Rejoice Christian Eagle. That's actually Buddy Bazell, the former Carl Albert Titan, who manages to pick up to the 27 yard line again of seven. Yeah, Bazell jumped over the defender and then fell forward for seven yards. Moore swings at the right flat for Harris. Harris jitterbugs a tackler, breaks contact, is up to the 30, dances again, 35 to the 40. Harris did submarines down, and by doing so, he picks up another three yards to the 44-yard line. That was all Keelan Harris, oh, eight he, of 17. You got to get the ball in his hands. Great job. And then when Harris got away from Darius Franklin, 
Franklin was punching at the ball. Sometimes when people go for extra yards, that ball gets kicked out, but Harris squeezed it tight to his right rib cage and got those extra yards. Fred Astaire from the grave called. He's jealous by that dance move. We got a flag here. There is a flag down. Ken Roan. That's a unsportsmanlike conduct foul against Southwestern, so the ball will move into the Bulldogs into the field. Now let's take this a step further. Uh, the official was speaking with, trying to find out who he was talking with. It wasn't Tyler King. Somebody, now we'll get to it in a moment. First to 10 at the 40 yard line of Southwestern. Oh, but you trying to at least get the game tied late third quarter. Wolf hands off Bazell, cream behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose five. And he is rudely introduced by Kanosh, the junior defensive tackle from St. George, Utah. Back to that other deal. He was actually talking with Dayton Wolf, who was the victim on that uh, personal foul. Second and 15. Sharp to tight end motions from right to left of the formation with 2.21 to play here in the third quarter. Clock is rolling 20 to 17 Southwestern. Now they're going to change the play. E.J. Moore has replaced Bazell in the lineup for the Bison. And it's Moore behind right guard. He just squirts out and gets the five yards lost on the previous play back to the 40, so it's third and 10. It is almost impossible to knock down E.J. Moore behind the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think uh, when he broke that 56-yarder up in Alva last week, uh, his confidence is just gleaming. He stays so low to the ground, it's really hard to find him in a mass of humanity. Third down and 10 to the 40, likely two down territory, four down territory again. Wolf fakes the handoff, here comes the pressure. Dayton gets away from a jersey tackle and won't get free from another defender. And he's sacked again. And that is Marquise Cunningham that got him off the edge. Yeah, Cunningham came on the blitz, on that run blitz. I think Southwestern thought OBU was gonna pass but that's where they got the five yard loss the first time. Cunningham came along with that big lineman, 260 pounder, Toots Kanosh. It was four down territory, it no longer yeah, is as exactly. Braden Phipps comes on to putt. Braden to get a 65 yard punt for shy of the school record set in 2013 and a career long for the Jinx fourth year player. High snap, Phipps gets it, now runs right, gets a leg into it. And it should work. Hits at the 16, spins down to the 10 of the 5. OBU has it corralled, and it's going to roll dead at the three-yard line. Wow. That's a 42-yard putt for Braden Phipps, who is having his best night punting. This is his first year of that role. That was an outstanding play by Braden Phipps, who, who's also a wide receiver. That was a very high snap. Phipps is not that tall. He jumps up, pulls the ball down, doesn't panic, moves to the right side and then just gets a little pooch kick and gets the right rotation going forward to roll down inside the five. You know, I look at the stats, it show, shows him at 6'1". I look at him from up here, he doesn't look like he's 6'1". Who, Brayden? Yeah. He's not 6'1". I stood next to him two weeks ago. Well, okay. <laughs> 45. So, somebody made the, the chart up wrong. 45 seconds to play, third quarter, handoff straight ahead to Henderson, and he squirts out across the five down to the seven. Pick up a four, and the clock continuing to wind down now an official stoppage of play as one of the offensive linemen for Southwestern is slow to get up. That appears to be Justin Benson, number 71. A very large opportunity for the Oklahoma Baptist defense here. Deep in the shadows of their own goalpost, Southwestern is under pressure here. If the Bison can squeeze that run or get a sack here, could get a big turnover. 36 seconds to play in the third quarter, 20 to 17 Bulldogs. Well, this defensive unit, guys, after a bumpy trip to Monticello, Arkansas, has really gotten better. They played well for four quarters or two quarters of the four against Washita here. And half of the game last week against Northwestern as well. Four quarters in Northwestern and two quarters in Monticello. Second down and six. They hand it off again. Henderson tried to pick his way. There's not much running room. Falls forward for a yard to the seven. Brett Carr, who on the tackle. That's a kid I really like. He is continuing to play good football. 15 seconds to play here in the third. It is third down and a long four. The ball at the nine yard line. They throw it in the backfield, and before they do, we get a flag of the play. 
I don't think the ball was set yet. Carr, who is saying it's wow. a false start against Wasu. That's exactly who it's against. Boy, OBU's lucky there because Bison were kind of coming in and off the field, and there's nobody set for Oklahoma Baptist on that play. Third down and nine, Southwestern at their own four-yard line. Five seconds to go in the third period. Morton, six yards deep in his end zone, guns it deep over the middle, and the ball is incomplete. It went through the hands of the intended target and split the numbers on his jersey. I think that was Cameron Harrison. It was 23, and that's the way the third period ends. 15 minutes to go to decide this one. At the end of three, Southwestern 20, Oklahoma after 17. This is Bison Football on the OBU Radio Network. I got end of I got end of third quarter scores on the board. We got lucky right here to hit the two and the three. That hit him between the numbers. to be the adjacency, right? Estate planning is a crucial step in protecting your family's future. With an estate plan, you can decide how to distribute your assets, make healthcare decisions, and support ministries after you pass away. It involves some pretty big decisions, but with guidance from Water's Edge, you can plan for your children's future, give to kingdom causes, and get expert help along. The put it away, Harris, inside the 50 to return. It's a good punt, Keelan. Backpedaling, returns it from his own 45. Up the middle of the 50, bounces out right, gets free of two defenders, and then is waylaid as he was stood up and then knocked back. OBU is going to start at the 48-yard line of Southwestern with 14-48 to play in the ball game. Outstanding punt coverage by Southwestern Oklahoma State University. Keelan Harris is electrifying. He goes back like a center fielder. Only gets about a four-yard return. But if they don't have that good coverage by the Bulldogs, he rips that off for double digits again. Time out. We'll pause for these messages. 20 to 17, Swasu early in the fourth on the Bison Radio Network. Down at 10, Dayton Wolf back to throw, rolling right now. He's tucking it right. He's inside the 40 and slides down to the 39. Wolf now quickly throws again as he throws it out right. That's fifth with a minimal gain to the 35 on first down. Second down and six upcoming. And this offense is going at a frenetic pace right now. That's okay. The fifths. All he did was do a little four-yard route on the slant just to get beyond the sticks. Second down and six at the 35-yard line of Southwestern. Early fourth quarter, a motion, Anderson to the near side. Wolf, sidearm, flips it over the middle. Phipps had it, lost it. Southwestern thought it was a fumble, and then Harris picks it up. It's an incompleted pass. He did not have 
have complete control of that reception. And that was a first down play, so it'll be second down and 10. They had moved the chains quickly on you, Todd. Yep, you're right. Second down and 10 up coming to the 35 yard line. Thank you very much. Nate Anderson, who's made his season debut tonight, has been out there a lot on offense. Former Eagle from Rejoice Christian. His high school may have the best team in 2A football this year in Oklahoma. Dayton Wolf from the gun. Southwestern coming up the middle with some pressure. Wolf stands tall. He throws it for Harrison. There's the flag. Finally, finally. Ashton Hamby got by with it once. He didn't get by with it the second time. That finally was it. Finally, there was a flag, but there were two of them. Didn't make up for the other one, but this will this will be helpful. Hey guys, uh, Southern Arkansas had a 21-16 lead at Henderson at the end of three. Henderson scores in the first 30 seconds on a 35-yard touchdown. They're back in front, 24-21. Uh, other third quarter scores all at the end of three: Monticello 28, Arkansas Tech 14, East Central 23 to three over Northwestern. Uh, Southeastern 27 to 24 over SNU. First and 10 OBU at the red zone, the 20 yard line. Hand off straight ahead, Nate Anderson, and look at the youngster go. Picks up five to the 15 yard line, running right behind Landstein of the center and the right guard, Devin Mack. Good job by Anderson. Both hands over the pigskin, high stepping over would be tacklers, getting four yards. Nate, just a sophomore, five foot ten, 190 pounds, played in nine games last year, had 16 carries for 41 yards. The bicep coach is excited as all get out to have him back. Ball just outside the 15, a gain of four and a half. Clock reads 13-22 to play in the ball game. OBU in scoring range now, inside the red zone, down just. 3, 20 to 17. Wolf has plenty of time. Checks Anderson in the backfield. Snaps it with 11. Throws out right. Ball is caught. Julian Clark a first down. And he turns inside the 10 and Clark is down to the 8 yard line. Perfect timing between Wolf and Clark. Clark a nice route on the out. One thing that Wolf did was look a little too long, but it was such a good route. Perfect pass. 8 to 7 sets up first and goal to go at the 8. Dayton Wolf. Waiting to snap back, gets it back, pedals to the 16, throw it back left corner for Phipps, and it's off of his fingertips incomplete. It was a very well thrown football, but great coverage that time by Jamison Mitchell. Put it right on the pylon in the corner. Everything was perfect, just couldn't come down with it. Well, I think Mitchell might have got some fingertips. Well, you're on that. right. I think he probably did. Great play by Mitchell. Mitchell, six foot. 190 pounds, a freshman from Paris, Texas. Clock will stop with 12.41 to play in the ball game. Second and goal to go, Oklahoma Baptist. You don't want three, you want seven. And take the lead here early in the fourth quarter. Anderson lines up to the right of Wolf. Two receivers left and right, no tight ends. Nate in a quick drop, throws into the end zone incomplete. That pass was way too high as he was looking again for Braden Phipps. And again, he was covered by Mitchell. That had no chance of being completed, Mitchell all over him, and then Wolf saw how tight the coverage was. He just threw it out of bounds. That was a great time for the Bison to do a draw play because the Bulldogs pulled their, pinned their ears back with the blitz, had a linebacker come from the left side of the defense. Braden Phipps comes off the field, three receivers wide to the press box side, a single receiver the slot to the far side. Four point play right here on third and goal to go at the eight. Now Wolf turns and says something to his running back, Nate Anderson. Gets the exchange, drops outside the 17, looking right, looking left. Now he's going to run for it inside the five, hit at the two, spins, and he is in for the touchdown. What a terrific second effort by Dayton Wolf. The guys he went deep in his progressions in the knees probably looking three or four deep, but they made the right decision, and it did not look like he was going to get in. They hit him shy of the goal line, but the quarterback just pounds, fought his way in for the rushing score. They had a lot of help from 340-pound Jake Sitzler, who just kept pushing the pile, pushing the pile, until Wolf fell into the end zone. First rushing touchdown, first of many for Dayton Wolf. OBU on the high side, 23-20. to 20. This is a huge extra point from Guillermo Garcia to make it a touchdown advantage, and I say that it would be a four-point advantage instead of three. So the Bison go 48 yards, and they do it in eight plays. Yerbo Garcia out of the hold of Braden Phipps. 
Russell to snap it. Everything is perfect. Garcia's extra point is on the way, and it is good. Here at SCI Supply, you truly can purchase with purpose. Whether you're a university, a K-12 school, a local nonprofit, a church, or an individual, we have exactly what you're looking for. And 100% of the profit from your purchase stays here to fulfill the mission of providing vocational training, employment opportunities, and residential care to individuals with special needs. So remember, how does your purchase make a purpose? By investing in South Central, the official office supply store of OBU Athletics. How can you describe Whataburger's Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich? The chicken just has a certain... And then there's the sauce that just gives you a little bit of... And the cheese? It's the exact right amount of... It's almost too hard to put it into... Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. The Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich at Whataburger. Just like you like it. OBU Athletics and First United Bank. A week against the Western Oklahoma team that they have fallen behind and somehow always had the answer to keep this game in their control. They lead by four, but there's a long ways to go. You guys talked about Dayton Wolf going, progressing through his reads. He did that. This time he did not hesitate full speed going up toward the end zone when he tucked the ball down the rain. Here's Garcia's kick. It's one of his shortest of the night. It's going to hit at the two, and then Henderson thought it was going to go into the end zone, has to pick it up, and he's dead to right inside the 10-yard line. They've tackled him at the eight. Henderson thought that ball was headed for the end zone, and I'll be truthful, I did too, but the ball that just kind of took a sideways spin, and Troy said, uh-oh, I better get on it. And by the time he made the decision, it was too late. Sometimes when that horseshoe's in the right place, boys, everything starts to go good. You get a kick that you didn't expect. You expect it to be out of play. You get the ball bobbled, and this follows the most unusual play of the night for Dayton Wolf when he looked and looked and saw coverage was too bad, but this time he found a spot to run. Well, 21 to go in the football game. 24-20, good guys here in Shawnee. Morton hands it off. First play of the drive is a handoff to, I believe, Palmer and Elijah. Tomlin hits him at the 11-yard line, so it'll be a gain of three. Good job by Elijah Tomlin spinning the ball carrier down for the tackle. On the previous play, K.J. Price, the first guy there. Under 12 minutes to play, 24-20 Oklahoma Baptist over visiting Swasu here at Shawnee. Bison looking to run their in-state in win streak to 18 straight. They'll throw a lateral across the way for Watson. He dropped the football, and it's an incompleted pass is that was actually a forward pass. It was just in front of the line of scrimmage. So it's third down and 11. I'll tell you what, from what I can see, there's been a lot of turnover in Southwestern's football coaching staff. I think they have a good one in Josh Kirkland. Oh, I, listen, the, the atmosphere and the body language of this team totally different from any uh, Southwestern team I've seen. Third down and seven at the 11 yard line. Big play for OBU's defense. Morton drops, throws out left, under thrown, incomplete. He was looking for Harrison, who was blanket at that time by Tyler King. And it's a three play and out series for Southwestern's defense. I think that was supposed to be a back shoulder yeah, throw I'm not to Cameron sure that, Harrison. I, I think the, I, I, I don't think he ran the right route. No, because quarterback. Uh, Put it way back, Tyler Morton back on the left. Yeah, Should have been yeah. the back shoulder toward the sideline. Yeah. Jared Van Winkle has just had awful punting field position here in this second half. This time he's going to feel good. He only is four yards deep into the end zone. I said Southwestern's defense, the OBU defense. Three it out when they needed it. Here's the stat back. Van Winkle puts a leg into it. It's a wobbly kick. Harris says, get the heck out of the way. It hits at the 45, bounce straight in the air, and will turn over to midfield. That's where OBU with a four-point lead will scrimmage with 11.31 to play from Crane Family Stadium at the Hurt Athletic Complex.
That time Keelan Harris was given too much respect for Van Winkle. Van Winkle in the back of his end zone. Harris was on the 43 of Oklahoma Baptist, and that ball only landed on the uh, southwestern 43. Pretty good punt of 39 yards for Van Winkle. Brooksy? What was the uh, what was the yardage on that drive? 48? The, the go-ahead score. 48. 48, yeah. So... They had only 147 yards of loss fans, and they got 48 on that drive. First down and 10 from midfield. Dayton Wolf with Nate Anderson in the backfield. Anderson picks up the blitz. Now Wolf is hit, and they've sacked him again, and here comes a flag hit. It was helmet to helmet. Hopefully, it would probably hold the Bulldogs. They brought the house that time. Boy, Dayton Wolf is one tough young man because he is getting hit and hit a lot. It is a face mask against Southwestern. Good call, partner. Yeah, because they came in so fast, I didn't think there was a hold. Wolf did a good job. The initial rushers on the edge, on both the edges, flushed Wolf up forward. Wolf did a great job stepping up, but then the second wave came and pulled his face mask. Southwestern at over 100 yards in penalties tonight. That's their 12th of the ball game. First and 10, Bison of the Bulldog, 35. They throw it out left. Anderson, and he is hit and dropped immediately. DeAndre Scott read that one, and Nate Anderson, who just came back from injury, is riding and painted his headgear is off, and out immediately comes the training staff for Oklahoma Baptist. While we get this delay, let me run this by you because it's a bit staggering when you start to look at the statistics at the end of three quarters. How many times would you expect if a quarterback had been sacked six times and your opponent quarterback had been sacked one time that there might be a chance that your team would have the lead in the fourth period? That's exactly the situation. Dayton has been sacked six times, and somehow or other, a scrappy OBU team has a three-point lead with 11 minutes to play. Timeout as they attend to the injured Nate Anderson. 24-20 Oklahoma Baptist in the fourth from Shawnee of the Bison Radio Network. Man, they just blew him up. I believe that's exactly what happened. Uh -oh. Looked like he was touching at his right rib cage. And so they have brought, I'm going to assume, an medic with the bag from across the field in to attend to Nate Anderson, who's headed to the bench. Well, Rick Gothard used that opportunity to go out of the field, the offensive line coach, and talk to his OL. Well, in that situation, when a receiver's hung out to dry, Anderson on the wheel route, the safety's up close, the safety reads it right in the ribs, probably knocked the wind out of him. E.J. Moore comes into the ball game. He is the single running back. Three receivers, a diamond formation right, single receiver left. Back to throw is Wolf, throws it out, right side to Terrace, 30, to the numbers, 25, to the 20, 15, 10, a touchdown, Oklahoma Baptist! Holy Toledo! Dalton Wolf just slung it sidearm on a little slip screen over the middle, and Keelan did the rest as he takes it 40 yards 
for the score. Perfect timing, great call by offensive coordinator Daniel Eaton. The Bulldogs are blitzing, blitzing. So one of the perfect passes against the blitz is a screen. You got a bubble screen right. Keelan Harris catches it. The linebackers are already rushing. All Harris with his super speed goes. He cuts it back left, outruns the defense for the score. Deion, uh, DeAndre Scott is the injured Bulldog, and they have raced the trader out for the east side of the stadium. So Keelan Harris with the touchdown and a huge one. And I can't say enough about the toughness of Dayton Wolf. He stood in, he knew he was going to take a shot and just sidearm flipped it just as he took the hit and delivered a strike at Harris with the magic feet and did the rest. You know, you love that play, that little slip screen where he comes back that way. But when it happens, normally you don't get the biggest break in the world where the entire field shifted towards the play. Because when it shifted towards the play, guess what was clear on this side? Nothing but open space. 81 yards tonight for Harris. That is touchdown number three for Keelan on his junior season. And second all-time among OBU receivers now with 22 receiving trips to the end zone. Well, John, there wasn't any open space. Keelan Harris made the open space. I'm telling you, that man can run. He can. And he was chewing up turf past everybody. So Guillermo Garcia will be on to try and make it an 11-point lead for the Bison. It's amazing. Three and a half minutes ago, we were sitting here wondering if a third down play would produce a tie in the game if it went the wrong way. Now we're sitting looking at uh, an 11 point lead if this extra point's good. Garcia out of the hold again of Braden Phipps. 10.35 to play and OBU has a two score advantage over Southwestern who led by three at the end of three, 20 to 17. Snap back, ball down, one step approach and the extra point rockets through the uprights. What a weapon this kid is. Reliable on point after tries. So we'll step aside, 10.35 to play. Bison 31, Bulldogs 20. This is OBU football on the OBU Radio Network. Here is Garcia's right to left boot and it hits a yard from the back line of the north end zone at Southwestern down by 11 will start first to 10 at the 25 yard line. You wonder now Juan Dog if this changes the offensive philosophy across the way. They've been content to try to run the game and play for the home run ball. No doubt they're down 11, uh, 10 35 talking about Southwestern down 11 uh, to the Bison, 1035 to play. Uh, I expect this strong arm quarterback, he's going to go deep. I'm going to tell you, though, if, Bi if the Bison win this game, it is on the strength of that defense tonight. Morton, high snap, throws it out left, ball caught, minimal gain. Closing and making the tackle was Caden Hall. I believe, was that 31? No, it's 37, Price. K.J. Price. And it goes for a yard gain to the 26. Receiver was Israel Watson on one of those useless horizontal passes. Watson has been featured a lot tonight. They'll hand it straight ahead. That is Palmer, like a bull through the bucking shoots at a rodeo, is across the 35 and out to the 37, a run of 11, and they'll move the sticks. Well, if you get 11 yards on every carry, you don't need to pass. 10 minutes exactly to play. 31-20 Oklahoma Baptist. Trying to rally again in the fourth quarter. They'll throw it out right. Lampley is hit behind the line and dropped. 
for a loss. Chase White Bear read it perfectly. And the play goes for a loss back to the 36. Yeah, you talk about anticipation. That was not even Chase White Bear's man. He was guarding a different guy going on a shorter screen, and he ran behind him and popped the other guy. Hand off again to Palmer. Running right in a good ankle tackle. He was about to gain some serious yardage, and K.J. Price got him on the right foot and trips him up. One yard gain. It's third down and 10. Palmer running right. Price running into him with the left arm, takes out the knee. 9.07 to play. Southwestern faces third and 10 to the 37. OBU will rush three on this offensive snap. Back to throw Morton, plenty of time into his second or third read. He's gonna tuck it and run, and he will not even come close to the first down. Hit hard out of bounds into the Bulldog sideline at the 41 yard line. And it was Nick Boone who came up doing a little bit of giant. You want a little update on the Great American scoreboard that will raise your eyebrows because now everything you talked about, about parity from the third team down to the bottom has just been uh, amplified. I'll give you the score in a moment. Fourth down and six at the 41 and Southwestern's into the field. They're going to go for it. Third time they've gone for it on fourth down tonight. They're two of two. They fake the handoff. It's a bootleg. Morton keeps it. He was hit short, but he fell forward to the 47. Yeah, I and think that he's got to get it. enough for the first down. His forward lean and then a good spot will refresh the marker. Good spot for Southwestern. I thought that he slid a yard and a half to get past the line. First and 10 Bulldogs. They're still breathing to the 47. Palmer the handoff right up the middle. Picks up four to the 49-yard line. Southwestern keeping the pedal to the metal. Both teams playing at a frenetic offensive pace tonight. How about this one? Southern Nazarene, 45. Southeastern State, 27. Four minutes to go. Unbelievable. Second down at six at the 49. Back to throw. Morton throws left, and it's underthrown. Incomplete. The receiver could not quite come back and make the reception of the Bison 40-yard line. Great coverage by Tyler King. Cameron Hairston comes back. It's a low pass, but there's really no window because King is so tight on Hairston. Well, two down territory. They went forward on their own 41. You can bet they will at the Bison 49. Need two stops. The first third and six at the 49. Block stops with 7.48 to play. Hand off to Palmer straight ahead, and OBU starting to diagnose that very well as they knock him down for a gain of two to the 47. And there's just a mass of green and gray and white humidity around the football. Torion Smith, one of the first men there. Also, Malik Allen uh, helping Smith there initially. 7-17 to play, fourth down and four for, the, for Southwestern. Bulldogs need to get to the 43. Morton throws it out right, has his tight end. Carson for a first down, down the sidelines and inside the 35, finally spun down at the 33. They needed four, he managed 13. That was just too easy. Had two wide receivers outright by the numbers, uh, the tight end, the, the inside guy. He followed the outside guy, used him kind of as a screen, catches the ball three yards and takes it the rest Second of the way. Second target, first catch, eighth of the year for Karsik. First and 10 Southwestern to the Oklahoma Baptist 33. Hand off to Henderson, straight ahead out of an ankle tackle, and he blasts to the 25, eight on first down. Clock is under six and a half minutes now to play. Now those are two big chunk plays the Bison have given up, up by 10. Morton throws it across the way. Ball is caught, but a the play is blown dead. Uh, up by 11, excuse me, 31-20, Bison over Southwestern. Yep, it's a false start. Southwestern sometimes, they've done that two or three times tonight. Scott, it's just a case in point of Get it up there before the ball's ready to play. And they've done it at bad times when they got big momentum going. Hopefully that slows them down. They'll swing it in the backfield for Henderson, and he dropped, and it's third down and nine at the 30-yard line. And this will be the 13th play of the Southwestern drive that started back at the Bulldog 25. Yeah, Coach Kirkland, Coach Jensen will tell you, penalties will break your momentum. Southwestern driving beautifully up the field, just that little illegal motion, stop that momentum, have an incomplete pass. Well, and I can tell you what happened. They didn't stop the clock, and it took the officials a little bit of time before they saw it. So 
Here's Ken Roan. Well, that's what I thought was happening. The clock ran. It's under. Oh, they did. They put 6.08 back on the clock. It was under six minutes. Third down to nine. Hand off to Palmer. Big hole inside the 25. And he has the first down at the 23 of the Bison. Nice block by Justin Benson on the left side. Southwestern doing a good job on those draw plays. Ready to go, third down, another flag, and they moved again. They didn't even have the down marker set across the way. Roger snap, all star, number 61, offense, five-yard penalty, first down. That infraction is against Paris Holmes. If he said 61, that's a freshman offensive lineman. So here we go again, first and 15 back at the 28-yard line. 5.47 to play, OBU 31, Swasu 20. Morton drops outside the 35, slings it over the middle with the ball, is caught at the goal line for a touchdown. That floated right over the hands of one of the defenders and was caught by Jalen Lampley for the touchdown. Yeah, you had double coverage, the Bison had bracket bracketed Lampley, one in front, one behind. Neither Bison broke on the, the play, only a three-man rush. So Tylen Morton had all day to stand there and threw it perfectly on the post. Brandon Spencer was the one that the ball just sailed over his fingertips. Yeah, One of those guys have got to make a play on the ball. You're in zone, zone coverage. There's only one receiver there. And staring him down was Tylen Morton, but Morton had all day, so that made it a lot easier for him. Lampley with a touchdown reception, his first of the year. Swasu down by five, will go for two. Just to pull him within 31-28 with 5.36 to play. Tylen Morton claps his hands. Now they hand it off to Henderson, and he's in for the try for two. That was too easy. And it was all because of the line surge on the left side. Timeout, 5.36 to play. OBU 31, Swasu 28. We'll pause for these local messages on the OBU Football Radio Network. Turn. He is to the 45, and Harris nearly broke it. They trip him up at midfield, and I don't know why they tried that. It was a short end-over-end kick on the near side boundary at the 20, but it got down there quick enough in which Harris was able to get forward momentum. He returns at 31. Wow, just get the ball in Harris's hands. He is, he's on the left sideline, cuts up to the middle, turns up the middle. One guy to beat. Great tackle by that last Bulldog to save a TD. OBU has answered last week at Alva. They've answered here tonight at Shawnee. Can they do it again? It's a three-point game, and OBU starts at midfield. Single setback with two receivers stacked both left and right. Here comes the pressure off the edge, and Wolf is going to be sacked again. Wolf is sacked back at the 45-yard line. Clock continues to wind down with 5.12 to play. Nothing is sacred, upset, Southern Arkansas, 28, Henderson, 24. Unbelievable. I tell you, Southwestern's bringing the house, so you're going to have man-to-man, -man and it could be man-to-man -man on Harris if they get him in the right spot. The safety tries to come over to help the – uh, the strong safety, but uh, when they bring that many guys, they're going to have somebody open. Second and 15 after the sack. Back to throw Wolf. Looks left. Pump fakes. Here he goes again. He's going to take off 50, and he slides down at the 47-yard line of Swasu. 
So that's going to leave him about seven yards short. It's third down. I think Wolf might have been able to go for that first down, but he's limping out there. He's been thrown to the turf so many times that uh, he's going to come out a lot of bruises tomorrow. I was about to say, I wonder why. He's going to need an ice bath after this one. Third down and seven Oklahoma Baptist at the Swasu 47-yard line. 418 to play of the ball game. Wolf drops, and he's hit again, and they've sacked him again. Back at the 44-yard line, so it is a loss of nine. Michael Marshall was wide open as a safety valve uh, outside the left hash, but sometimes when the guys come in right in your face, it's hard to find them. Southwestern has been able to put pressure on the opponents. They were tied for third in the conference with seven sacks through three games. That two-point conversion is huge because Van Winkle's a very good kicker. He just missed one field goal tonight. Braden Phipps to punt from the 30. Good punt. Wobbly. Across the way. Hits at the 21. Doesn't get the bounce. It rolls backwards to the 25 at his touch there. So just a 28-yard punt. No return. Swasu could tie with a three. Take the lead with a touchdown with 3.23 to play. You know, you had that seven sacks in three games. They've got seven sacks tonight in this game. They've equaled their season in this game tonight. And somehow... You know, OBU's hanging on with a three-point lead. I will say it again. OBU has been among the best in the fewest sacks allowed in the entire country the last four years. There's a reason, and he's not here. Fourth down, or a first down at 10. A lot of scrimmage is at the 26-yard line. They'll throw it out in the right flat for Watson. Needs a block, doesn't get much. He'll pick up minimal yardage to the 31. That's actually five. Well, they've just worked the perimeter all evening long. Yeah, that was a good tackle by Brandon Spencer. He got there just two steps with a hard hit and takedown. Eight of five, second down at five. And again, back to the ground game. It is Palmer that gets the handoff. And Gerald is stopped after a yard gain to the 32. So it's going to bring up third down and four. Nick Boone on the stop. That, that did the Bison a favor. Only 246 left in this game. Both teams have three timeouts left, 2.43 to play. Morton will throw left, catch for the first down at the 37-yard line, and then he's pushed back. And on the receiving end was Israel Watson. Yeah, oh, right in the OBU zone between two guys again, Israel Watson, all he does is run a seven-yard route just past the sticks. 2.20 and the clock is winding. Southwestern first to 10 of the 37. Handoff into the middle of the pile goes Palmer. And he manages from the 37 down to the 40 or up to the 40. And Torian Smith was in there on the tackle. Wow, and the Southwestern hadn't used a timeout yet with two minutes and 13 seconds left. Play action pass. Morton will throw it out left. High throw. The ball is caught by Hairston. And now a flag comes in at the end of the play. K.J. Price was the one that hit him, but did he do so legally? Well, he undercut him. He de definitely didn't hit him high. He, he got chopped, but I don't know what was wrong with that I tackle. I agree with you, but is that what the officials yeah. saw? Yeah, well, it's kind of my question related to the official. And Watson's down. Israel Watson is hurt. Well, that's Harrison who made the catch, and he is down. Right at the first down marker of the 47 of Southwestern with 153 to play. So the Bison looking to win 18 in a row against Oklahoma Division II schools. Since 2017 are less than two minutes away from it if they can hold here. Now remember Southwestern does not need a touchdown. Van Winkle's longest field goal attempt this season is just 35 yards, and that came in the opener. And Harrison gets a round of applause as he's able to walk off the field on his own power. And they're spotting the ball. Right now they spotted it just short. They're still showing second down of the down marker. If they put it at the 46, if so, it's not quite enough for the first down. But again, there is still a flag down as the officials are discussing. 
Look like they picked up the flag, and I see a blue beanbag on the ground, too. Here's Ken Roan. Oh, that's terrible. That is an absolutely terrible call. <laughs> I mean, you take the light. The receiver jumps up. Great leap by Hairston. So his legs, and they have a low tackle. I thought that was the whole purpose. They wanted to protect the head. And unfortunately, Hairston was flipped upside down and was down, but that was a clean hit. First down, Swasu at the OBU 39-yard line with 153 to play. Tied in left. Palmer is in the backfield. Gerald gets the handoff, the workhorse. Breaks tackles. He's inside the 30 and almost took it to the house. Finally, they corral him at the 20-yard line. Well, 19, and almost all of that was between the tackles and after contact. That was an unbelievable run by Gerald Palmer. And one of the reasons is when he was three yards downfield, Nick Boom gave him a pop, and that ball came loose. But luckily, Palmer grabbed it back in the air, pulled it back to his body, got those extra yards. Palmer now will check out late on the play clock. It's down to 17. In comes Troy Henderson. Game clock is at a minute and a half to play. Southwestern's in the red zone at the 20-yard line, down by three. They'll hand it off to Henderson, and Troy just does not have the same muscle against that defensive front here in the fourth quarter running between the tackles. He picks up a yard. It's second down and nine at the 19, and we're down to 73 seconds to play in the ball game. Well, Jackson Turner for the Bison, 5'10", 270 pounds, clogged up that hole on Henderson. Next time the Bulldogs snap it, there will be less than a minute to play, and OBU leading 31-28. Second and nine at the 19, handoff again. And that is Henderson, he was hit by Torian Smith and spun backwards. The game goes to the 16, it's third down and six. Clock ticking down with 44 seconds to play. And Chase White Bear finished off the play. Now the Bulldogs are going for the win here. They're going for the touchdown. So the Bison still got to be up there and the pressure be on the kicker if they can stop them. Line of scrimmage at the 16 of Oklahoma Baptist. 30 seconds to play. Tyler Morton trying to end OBU's run of dominance against Great American Conference Oklahoma schools. And now the Bulldogs will spend the time out as the play clock was down to 11. And the game clock is stopped with 22 seconds to play. And they're going to put one second. One more second up there. They asked to put 23. How about the coaching of new coach Josh Kirkland? Uh, this whole drive, Southwestern moving the change, moving the chains, and they just now took their first time out. He took over a program that has been downtrodden. Now, they've lost some close games, but their win over Southern Arkansas in week two was their first win since 2019. That's a little misleading because there wasn't a 2020 season, but they went 0-11 last year. Their attitude is better. Their physicality is better. Their Pen effort on both sides of the football is much better. And their penalties are actually down. They're one of the most penalized teams throughout the conference for the last five, six years. Here we go. Southwestern knocking to the door. 23 seconds to play. 31-28 Oklahoma Baptist. Palmer is back out there. Henderson is in the backfield as well. It's a half diamond look from the 16-yard line. The give to Palmer coming right. Hit and is stopped at the 13-yard line. 17, 16, 15 seconds to play. It's fourth down and three. And now Josh Kirkland with a big decision early in his coaching career at Swasu is going to take a timeout. K.J. Price with a nice form tackle. Put that shoulder pad right on the right thigh of Jared Palmer. All right, Scott, what do you do here? If you kick a field goal, it is... See, it's at the 12. It would be a 29-yard field goal. There is absolutely no wind tonight here at Shawnee. At game time, it was five miles per hour out of the south-southwest. If you go for it, you have to pick up about a yard and a half. And then there's still going to be under 10 seconds to play. With one timeout, you might get two snaps to go for the win. Yeah, you gamble if you don't kick the field goal I here. Agree. Now, if you had two timeouts left, you could go for it. But that's a gamble anyway, because if the Bison stop them, the game's over. If they kick the field goal and you've got a great field goal kicker, you're almost assured to go overtime. If you go for it and still get the first down, sometimes they stop the clock to move the chains. But that clock runs, you only have one timeout, and then you have to get a touchdown. I can tell you this, Van Winkle is not out there with the field. Tyler. Morton is out there, and they're going to go for it. 
Fourth down and a yard and a half. The ball at the Oklahoma Baptist 13. Swasu with one time out, three point nice and lead. 12 seconds to play. Troy Henderson is in the backfield, lined up to the left of Tylen Morton. Morton changing perhaps the play, moves Henderson to his right. Play clock is down under 10 for Swasu. They may use their final time out here. I think they just wanted to draw him off sides, but not even barking out signals. Yep, that's what they're going to do. They'll take the timeout with one on the play clock. And now we will see Jaron Van Winkle come out more than likely to try and attempt a field goal. I don't think you go for it now if you burn your final timeout. No, you can't. I mean, well, it's possible to get up if they stop the clock to move the chains, but there's some plays that the officials, even on first downs, they let the play run. So if the clock doesn't stop and they get a first down and not a touchdown, you got thir you got to get a 13-yard touchdown run right here. They probably would run the ball on fourth and a yard, less than a yard. But you have to put Van Winkle out there. But you know what? I admire the guts of the new coach, Josh Kirkland. The ball was actually at the 12, not the 11. And they are a full yard and maybe a yard to half away from the first down. They need to get to the 10-yard line. And indeed, they're going to bring Van Winkle out for what would be a fairly short field goal attempt of 29 yards, but it's not a given, especially with the pressure to tie the game with 12 seconds to play. The snap is coming back from Ethan Easley. Good snap ball down. Van Winkle's kick is on the way, and it is good. The Southwestern with 11 unanswered points after Oklahoma Baptist had built an 11-point lead at 31 to 20 in eight seconds to play were that close to overtime here in Shawnee. Wow, how big, Todd, is that two-point conversion that you said that's too easy when Henderson just ran off tackle left, just plowed in, easily getting into the end zone. Well, that's where the Bison might have used a timeout or some kind of strategy because that's the only way they're going to overtime right here is that because of that two-point conversion. OBU 31, Southwestern Oklahoma 31, a night in which it looks like Southeastern will lose to Southern Nazarene down in Durant, a night in which Henderson State has lost at home to Southern Arkansas, a night in which the two big boys are playing in Arkadelphia, number seven Harding at number nine Washita, and next week we will see the Bisons at First Security Stadium in Searcy. No easy games in this conference, and you and John talked about it from third place down to the bottom. <laughs> You're getting a lot more parity. Then of course, anytime in college athletics, you just can't show up and play. You have to make plays to win no matter who your opponent is. Nate Anderson is down there encouraging some of his teammates. He has his shoulder pads off. So that's a, that's a good sign that he's not horribly injured, it would appear. Although he's injured enough, he's not coming back into the ball game. Let's see if Van Winkle will approach from 10 yards, just will squib it down the middle of the field, and he does. It's a line drive kick, and Harris will field it from the 10 to the 15, Keelan to the 20, to the 30, and down he goes. And with two seconds to play, OBU will have it for one snap, and I think you probably just take to an E and play for overtime now. Yeah, good tackle by Caleb Go Goforth, because you know what was in the mind of Keelan Harris and that's one place where Van Winkle shouldn't have kicked it. I think he should have just maybe did like an onside squib, but kind of what you mentioned and not going to Harris, but uh, that's what the Bison wanted. A nice tackle by Goforth. Time of possession tonight. Southwestern a dominating nine and a half minute advantage, 34-51 to 25-01 for OBU. And that's exactly what Chris Jensen is going to do. He's going to go into the kneel down position and we will play overtime. So 60 minutes of football is not enough on Hall of Fame weekend here on the OBU campus. OBU 31, Southwestern, Oklahoma State 31. It all comes down, a lot of it does, to that coin flip. You want the early momentum. Both teams, though, will get possessions and they will play it from what, the 20 yard line in? I think that's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, Southwestern, I think they're going to start with the run. They're going to give it to Palmer. They're going to feed Jared Palmer 
as much as they can, and they'll try to maybe pop a pop a pass there from the 25. Or Tonight, 53 carries, 226 to the ground for Southwestern. Let's step aside before the coin toss at midfield for stations to identify themselves. This is Oklahoma Baptist football on the Bison Radio Network. OBU fans, do you want the chance to support OBU student athletes from the convenience of your own mobile device? Text hashtag BAA at OBU to the number 52014 to support BAA student athletes. Donations are fully tax deductible and every gift makes a difference in the OBU student athlete's life. Again, text hashtag BAA at OBU to the number 52014. For more information, log on to OBUBison.com. Ah, yes. Whataburger's Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich. It's just so, you know, it's almost too hard to put into words. The Honey Barbecue Chicken Strip Sandwich from Whataburger. Just like you like it. OBU Athletics and First United Bank are now excited to announce that First United Bank is the official banking partner of OBU Athletics. Visit their North Harrison Street location today and ask about how you can make a statement with the OBU debit card. Estate planning is a crucial step in protecting your family's future. With an estate plan, you can decide how to distribute your assets, make health care decisions, and support ministries. Again, he was a young man that was not listed on the two deep chart this week. Zach Frazier, Elon Harris, Nick Boone are the captains out there along with Trajan Lance. Again, you will play it like a regular possession from the 25-yard line in. You can kick field goals. You can kick extra points. However, into the third overtime, you must go for two. You want that first. A lot of teams, though, Scott, will they'll, they'll go on defense first, won't they? That way they know what they have to do. Well, if you got a stout defense, the, you do want to do that. Then you can just kick the field goal if you stuff them. But uh, Bison want to go on offense the way the Bulldogs have been running the ball tonight. Southwestern, I think, is going to get the first possession. I think OBU may have won the coin toss. I didn't actually see it. But Southwestern is going to have the football, and they will be at the north end here of Crane Family Stadium at the Hurt Athletic Complex. Why not put that OBU defense out there? I know they've given up 442 yards, but sometimes that doesn't matter when you've been effective in the red zone. They've held Southwestern tonight to a lot of three-pointers and not touchdowns. Yeah, three times. Uh, it was the bend but don't break play for the Bison, and you're going to start at the 25-yard line in overtime. Here we go, Southwestern with the first possession. Bulldogs trying to put the brakes on an a 17 game Oklahoma win streak against by OBU. Handoff, no, it's a fake handoff. They flip it out left. Israel Watson with ready room, 15, and he angles out of bounds to the inside the 10 yard line. He's down to the nine. He was tackled there by Brandon Spencer. So it'll bring up first down and goal to go, a gain of 14. That play worked because on that screen, Cameron Harrison came to block the defender, and that freed Israel Watson. Actually at the eight yard line, hand off to Henderson, dances, makes defenders miss, spins inside the five, still will not go down. Henderson still struggling, the play is not yet blown dead, and they finally end it at the two yard line. So it's second and a goal to go for Southwestern. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of, all that uh, running and pushing. And it looks similar to when Dayton Wolf was pushed and pushed by the offensive line of the Bison for that touchdown. Uh, Southwestern did the same thing, pushing Henderson. Second down, a goal to go Southwestern. First possession of overtime, game tied at 31. Gerald Palmer is in the backfield. Morton claps his hands, gives it to Palmer. He was hit, keeps those big legs moving, and he was denied. He's down inside the one yard line. So it's third down and goal to go. Xavier Lott, he did not give any ground at all for the Bison. 
uh, to stop the muscular Palmer driving his legs there inside the two. Torian Smith comes into the ball game for Oklahoma Baptist. For a little more muscle up front, Southwestern has Palmer down. And so the Bulldogs are headed to the east side here of the stadium, and Oklahoma Baptist is going to race the trainers out, or the manager, should I say, with some towels and some water. It wasn't particularly hot, not like we thought it was going to be earlier in the week. At game time, it was 86. But, man, it was tough to breathe down there with that humidity before the ball came. Well, with Jared Palmer going down, he's going to have to come out of play. He's the power guy for the Bulldogs. Now, Henderson is still a great running back, and I tell you what, Palmer is limping badly. I think it's a cramp. They had his leg stretched out, and, boy, those things hurt. Now he's starting to walk a little bit better. He's trying to stretch his leg out. I think that's what it was. It's just a cramp. And Southwestern has the ball inside, just inside the Bison one-yard line. OBU, even if they give up a touchdown, will have a possession to start of the 25 to try to answer. Troy Henderson is the single setback. Tylen Morton is the quarterback. Two tights for Southwestern, one receiver. Hand off to Henderson, and Henderson got in for the touchdown. And I mean, he didn't get initially. Looked like they had him stacked up. Nick Boone thought he was stopped short. But they went behind Daniel Ballinger that time, and he was the lead block for the smaller Troy Henderson. Jonah Lebeshek was right there, a lot more weight than what Henderson has. He grabbed him, but Henderson had some leverage angling inside toward the goalpost for the score. Here is Van Winkle for an all-important extra point. 37-31, Swasu. Snap and hold are perfect, and Van Winkle's extra point is good. We just rockets it off of his foot. So it's 38 to 31 Swasu, which means OBU now must go a touchdown and convert the extra point to extend this game to a second overtime. Terrific crowd here on Hall of Fame game night. Good contingent of OBU students. Booster section almost completely full. And here comes Dayton Wolf. Most important drive of his young career today. The first down at 10 for Wolf and company. No Nate Anderson here at overtime. He was injured towards the end of regulation. Wolf claps his hands. Now he drops, he throws, and it's low, but the catch is not made. But Michael Marshall may have had his hands underneath it. He drops it at second down and 10. All right, Southwestern switched up their defense that time. They've been in a four-man front throughout the contest. They're on a three-man front just playing the, the pass there, and then OBU just throws the a little three yard pass. We are in overtime period number one, Southwestern 38, Oklahoma Baptist 31. Second down to 10, Bison of the 25. One back set, that is EJ Moore. Straight drop for Wolf. Now he'll throw left, he's got Harris at the 14. Keelan spins and is drugged down by the jersey from Ashton Hamby. He's done that all night long, but that's a first down. And OBU can get a first down now without scoring the touchdown as the game goes to the 11 yard line. Great job, great call upstairs. Wolf finds the electric receiver. Keelan Harris gets free. He cuts inside, he's just inside. The numbers cuts out towards the sideline to get open. Second there, first down and 10 at the Southwestern 11. Bulldogs lead it over time by seven. Wolf to throw. Wolf stepping up, Wolf running right. Wolf is gonna take it himself. And Dayton Wolf is finally tackled inside the 10 yard line. A minimal gain, in fact, he came up just short of the nine, but it may go all for not as there's a flag behind the play. It's a hold against the Bison. And the Bison can't have that. It's just a three man rush. Uh, Kirkland switching it up. Just three men rushing. You've got five linemen blocking. Uh, you can't let the Bulldogs have pressure with three men and get a holding penalty. The penalty is assessed from the original line of scrimmage, the 11, so it's back to the 21. It's first and 20. 
OBU has to score and convert the extra point to force a second overtime. Wolf to throw out left. Bad pass. Offline looking for Harris. And Harris had a defensive player in the vicinity. That was Sean Selby. Looked like a timing pattern. Harris was looking at Wolf saying, hey, that's not where I was going. And you don't have to throw the ball that fast. They're not bringing the blitz anymore like they did the entire Game. Better get a good chunk here or you're in trouble. Two receivers left and right. They start Michael Mar Marshall in motion. Motion started to hold up. Now accelerates and becomes one of trips wide right. Here's the play. Wolf throws towards the end zone and it is incomplete. He had him. He underthrew it and it hit the defender, Logan Monroe, in the back. Wow, Marshall on the post pattern. Perfect pass by Wolf. I don't know if the defender tipped that. It looked like it hit Marshall in the stomach. No, it hit him in the back. Oh, like he had his it, back I think turned? it hit Logan Monroe in the back. Wow. Third down and 20 at the 21-yard line. Southwestern jumping for joy. Two defensive stops away from a win. They show pressure on the young freshman quarterback from Westmore. Overtime period number one. Here's the snap back from Land Steiner. Wolf drops to the 30. He'll roll right. Dayton is going to throw towards the end zone, and it is intercepted. That'll do it. Southwestern is into Oklahoma Baptist. 17-game win streak against in-state competition. Jamie on Mitchell with the interception. Uh, Wolf had to was flushed out. Only a three-man rush. Feeling the pressure on third and long. Threw it up there for his receivers. Nice interception by uh, the defender. 38-31 is our final score in overtime. The postgame show is coming up after this two-minute break. This is Bison Football on the OBU Radio Network. Southwestern, I'm sure, talking down below as they went at 38 to 31. And I told you there's just no love loss between these two programs. Braden Jones was getting chewed out by Troy Henderson, Southwestern, pulling them away. I know OBU is frustrated. I can imagine as Southwestern struts off the field. As they should. They came here and won a football game that 
not many teams have been able to do, at least in Oklahoma. In fact, have not done it in five years since late 2017. Final score tonight, 38 to 31. The only scoring in the overtime period was a Troy Henderson one-yard run and the extra point by Jaron Van Winkle made it 38-31. OBU started the 25. They got down to the 11. They then had a holding penalty, backed him up to first and 20 at the 21-yard line. They gained nothing on the pass at the 20, and then on third and 20 at the 21-yard line, Dayton Wolf scrambling, trying to make something happen. He ended up throwing an interception to Jamison Mitchell with the end zone to end the evening. Let's go downstairs to Brooksy. Well, I can help you a whole bunch here because I was right around all of it. Once the sh handshake was over, the 17 chip began from the Southwestern players. Not everybody, but, you know, there's always wise guys everywhere. And there's always some people can't keep their mouth shut. And these guys started to chip with 17 watts, 17 watt, meaning the winning streak. And the next thing you know, the tempers began to flare. And the coaches did a good job of trying to get in between and stop them. And three times it looked like they had. But there was always somebody that couldn't keep their mouth shut, kept it going. Both guys, both sides getting angry at each other. And you saw it pushing and going. And finally, they got them separated. But believe me, it all was around number 17 because it did not get to 18. Southwestern in overtime wins at Shawnee tonight, 38 to 31. And again, not a lot of love lofts between these two programs. Not a lot of Christmas cards exchanged over the years between the programs, but give Southwestern their due. They came here and won tonight in overtime, and they won it 38 to 31. They had a brilliant late game drive that resulted in a field goal that tied it with two seconds to go. It was a drive that uh, used up almost the entire final 342. In fact, it took 340 of the final 342. And uh, that left OBU with really nothing to do but take a knee, go to overtime. Southwestern then scored in uh, five plays at a Troy Henderson run. OBU again had a holding penalty that Scott really proved to be costly, and that has been a problem for this offense all year long. They've just put themselves behind the eight ball too many times with negative plays and short yardage plays on first down. Well, what's amazing is throughout the game, Southwestern sent in five, six players. Uh, even more sometimes putting pressure on Dayton Wolf. But in overtime, that crucial holding penalty that you're talking about came with a three-man rush, and OBU at least had the five down linemen in the center, two guards, two tackles, and if you want to count a back in there, there's no way that the Bulldogs should get to Dayton Wolf, and there's no way that you can afford a penalty after that good play to Keelan Harris. Chris Jensen is addressing his team. Down below, after he is finished, John will have his post-game interview. Hopefully that's coming up after this two-minute break. This is OBU Football on the Bison Radio Network.
a tough night. A lot of upsets around the league. One was here, so, but life does go on. You just got to turn it back on Monday. Right, and we'll, we'll do that. All right, Chris, thanks. All right, guys, we'll go back upstairs to you to wrap it up. Thanks, Brooksy. I can tell you I've been around Chris now for seven years, and that's about as disgusted, Scott, as I've ever heard him after a game. And I can assure you it had nothing to do with the final score. It had everything to do, as he alluded to, with what took place after the game. Sometimes you just can't take the bait. You have to go on and walk away and emotions ran high tonight and that just unfortunately ended uh, the way that Chris and his staff do not like for it to end and that's not a culture as he said that he promotes and uh, uh, is, is, is behind. I mean it's just not the way they do business here. Chris Jensen, one of the most moral coaches that you'll find anywhere. Uh, there must have been some bad things that said you, you know tempers run amok sometimes you're intense Look at a 17-game winning streak over Oklahoma schools. That's domination. That is dominating the state of Oklahoma for those years. That is an outstanding run by the Bison. A lot of things could have went different. You lost in overtime. Uh, it was just a great football game. And, of course, competitors, when you really care, sometimes tempers, things are said that you don't 